media he mode. covers your story, your story will be oh, covered in the ground up. All right, welcome back to an all new episode of The Jason Lee Show. Okay, my next guest, I felt like she was just dodging me. You know, sort of like them bullets I was dodging when I got shot at 15, <laughs> but not as cute. Uh, please welcome to the show, my friend, and it's always hard to interview an interviewer, uh, model, actress, and she can throw them hands. Uh, please welcome Anna oh, Rose. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Thanks it, for having me, Jason. No, of course. Well, I tried to have you a long time ago. But it's been booked, like a year. You're booked and busy. I, I, yeah, but I, I appreciate you being patient with me, and I'm finally here. Of course. I mean, it's not like I can say no. I mean, what am I going to say? I'm not going to argue <laughs> with Amber Rose. It's just not going to happen. First of all, you look really good today. You look Thank good you, every day, but I don't know if I've ever seen you in pink, but the pink really works. I do not usually wear pink. No, I'm usually in all black, but I just felt... I felt, I don't know, it just felt like a happy color today. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so why pink? Why does pink make you happy? Pink is just a very, it's just a happy color, like yellow, like bright orange, yeah. you know? When you wake up to like bright colors, you usually have a better day, so. So everybody watching the show, if you've been following my career, you know Fat Jason was being an asshole to Amber Rose a long time ago. We've never done an interview since then. Right? Really? No. I don't think really? so. Really? Years. This has been ye 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 You know, we've been, we blocked been, each other. Yeah. Well, I blocked you, I think. Well, I okay. definitely blocked you, but I don't know if you blocked me too. Okay, see, that's how we're going to start the show. What happened was, <laughs> I was being an idiot. She blocked me or I blocked her. Or some, maybe we just blocked <clears throat> mm -hmm. each other at the same time. Think and so. then we had a great interview, which that's when I really, for the first time, you know, having heard Amber Rose or heard the Amber Rose that nobody ever heard talk. He, you know, people had had all these ideas. I had all these ideas. I was talking my on my little show, not knowing anybody was watching, and you saw it, and you pulled up, and you were like, I got all the time in the day. And what I learned in that interview early on and that I've just seen since then and getting to know you personally is, like, you're really as real as it gets. And I mean that. Appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. But people didn't really get that at first, right? I mean, I wasn't really allowed to talk for, like, two years. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know... But were you not allowed to talk? Because you don't give me somebody could. I mean, I wasn't. You. I was young, you know. So when I say I wasn't allowed to talk, I was very young and in uh, in a relationship where it was frowned upon mm -hmm. to talk. So, so how old were you when we first met you? Like on in the whole when you were Amber Rose. Uh, it was two thousand nine. I think I came out um, February. Is it February? Maybe. So you were how old then? Twenty five. Maybe 26. Yeah, about 25. I'm 40 now. Which I saw on the cards, and I was going to get into 40 because me turning 47 this year, you being 40, I really feel like we're defining aging because nobody's going to look and, you know, like what yeah, does for looking sure. 40 look like? But I'm going to get to that in a minute because since you started here with the can't talk and was held in the basement uh, against No, you, don't well, say that. <laughs> okay. So I'm just adding. Okay. So you're this young Amber, you hit the streets. Mm -hmm. We don't hear from you. Was that intentional that you were just this muse who doesn't talk? Because we see that with Bianca now and we're wondering are we trying to recreate Amber Rose? Was that mm -hmm. what kind of the thing was when you came to know um, us coming to know who you were? Um, well, oh, let me let me be fair. OK, half of it was a culture shock for me. You know, um, I was in the, I lived in the projects in the Bronx when I was discovered. Um, and so I was your everyday girl. I had friends, I was loved by people, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm in like a $3,000 pants, you know, in Paris with people taking pictures of me. And then I, you know, at that time, I Google, I would never Google myself now, but I would Google myself and be like, you know, Amber Rose or like bald girl in Ludacris video, mm -hmm. like just see what they were saying. And it was very, it was not nice. You know, and so then I was like, oh, my God, like, I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to say anything. I don't want to draw attention to myself, although just walking anywhere was just bringing me attention mm -hmm. um, and not saying anything was bringing more. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But uh, but I was not. And I say aloud. It was frowned upon for me to have any type of social media or anything like that. It was just like. um be seen and and not heard, mm. and that and that's what I did. 
And then, now we know you as mother, and we know that the gays love you and you love the gays, but I didn't know you was you was probably gay too, because you was with the trans, like you was in the get, you lived with- I was the, in the ballroom scene, yeah. In the ballroom scene, and we've seen the videos now with you walking with the big hair and all that. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I know that before? Is it because I wasn't I wasn't looking, or was it just something that we people knew, right, back where you're from? Well, or? I mean, I wasn't famous. Mm -hmm. I was just a regular girl that just happened to do balls. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't like you know. Even when I was a dancer, it's like, like for example, China, she was like a famous stripper. Mm -hmm. Like people would travel to go see China. Mm -hmm. People didn't come and see me. Mm -hmm. I was just a girl at the strip club. It was very different, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, I just. I guess I was somewhat popular, but uh, I wasn't, I don't know. No one really cared, I guess. But when you look back at the vintage, because that's a vintage ballroom, the one video, you know what I'm talking uh -huh, about, right? Uh -huh. That was like, you stood out clearly. Did nobody discover you in that world? Like, I mean. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I used to, uh, I used to give out autographs on the bus. Uh -huh. <laughs> You know, and it would be like old heads there and it would be like, girl, you gonna be somebody one day. I need that autograph just in case, you know? And I did, and I and I, I was like, all right, you know. But I just never really, I don't know, I just never really thought it would ever come to fruition. Mm -hmm. I just, even how it all happened, like the stepping stones into to fame, it wasn't premeditated at all. It just, ha it just happened that way. Okay, so you're discovered in the video, you become this girl that we all see walking on the street with Kanye all over the world. Mm -hmm. But behind that, when what I really connected with Amber, and this was a while ago at one, not the house I'm in now, but my other house where you had come over and we had a long conversation mm -hmm. uh, about just you. And, and it wasn't an interview, it was like a real conversation just trying to get to know who you were and the humanizing of your story and the relationship you had with the, what was, the, what was the trans woman's name? Was trans man. It, was it trans man? Yeah. But you all had a really close relationship. Mm -hmm. And is that where you learned and developed your affection and love for the gay community to understand like there's a whole other world that's having a whole other lived experience? Well, no. So my best friend growing up, Maurice, was gay. And he came out to me first and he was like 13. Mm -hmm. he, we lived across the street from each other. So that's how I started going to the gayborhood, trying to find that's friends for him. <laughs> You know, and like a support system for him. And uh, and then that's how, you know, I got discovered in the neighborhood by, you know, my my initial house father, John Karan, rest in peace. And uh, he was like, you're my daughter. He was like, are you real? And I'm like, I, yeah. And he's like, no, are you fish, bitch? Are you like, and I'm like, well, he thought fish. You were, he, thought you were... he thought I was a, the girl, yeah. like one of the girls. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, like, I, I have a vagina, yeah. if, that, if that helps. Um, he was like, oh, bitch, <laughs> you're my daughter. Like, where I'm taking you out. And then uh -huh. so that's when I did the... So were you doing, you were face, for sure? I was face, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was that the only thing you walked or what else? That's the only thing I walked. Really? Female face. But I'm undefeated. you could have gave him everything else. You could have gave him body. You could I mean, you could have gave him everything. I, I, Jason, surprisingly, I'm very introverted, too. Because like, you're a damn Libra. I, I, maybe. You and the Cardi B's of the world that everybody expect to be these big, Wild, yeah, we're not. No, mm -mm. even if you can give it on camera or in photos or whatever, it's like when all that's done, that's no, done. That's an alter ego. Like yeah. I like I turn into Amber Rose mm -hmm. for moments, mm -hmm. um, but that's not, that's not who I am. And that I think connects to what I'm trying to establish because I really feel like in that conversation we were having at my house, the authenticity was really there. You know, a lot of people, especially women in this industry, they'll get famous, they'll find some gay guys to have around as accessories, and then they want to be mother, but they really don't understand our community, where we come from, our, you know, and I, I've always seen that different in you, mm -hmm. you know, because everybody around you gay, including, you know. Yeah, Joe, Joe been with me for nine years, can you believe it? I do. I remember yeah. I had a crush on Joe a long time ago. Did I tell you? Everybody got a crush on Joe. Yeah, but, He's so hot. But after I, I got a crush on Joe. After I seen him beat up his friend in public, I was like, I can't. Uh-uh, don't do that. <laughs> but I love Joe. I had his back. I no, know. Joe is a non-violent <laughs> sweetheart. Joe's a sweet guy. Uh-huh, that's what the police said. All he right, was. But no, Joe, Joe is good people. Okay, so okay, so you're now thrust into the limelight. Mm -hmm. um, you're now like the talk of the town, even though you're not talking to the town. Right. And everybody thinks because you're walking around Paris Fashion Week and you're living in the, you got the furs and you got all of that, mm -hmm. uh, that you're living in paradise. And what I was struck by 
when we were talking was the hell that you described that you were going through. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that? Sure. Uh, As like, what part of hell? Okay, so. (laughs) Are you referring to? When you get in it, Mm -hmm. from the outside, when you got in it, Mm -hmm. did you think that it was, was it what you thought it was gonna be? Absolutely not, no, no. So so here's the thing for people that are watching um, that wanna be famous. It is, um, <clears throat> how can I explain it? Again, it was a culture shock because it was one extreme to the other, right? Living in the projects, you know, being with someone that at that time had been famous for a while and understood how to navigate fame. I did not understand how to navigate fame. And there's no training program. There's no book, there's no training. There's You're kind of just fed to the sharks, right? So it's like, you're my girlfriend, you know, wear this, don't say anything, whatever they say on the internet, don't respond, don't have social media, you know, you're on my time. And I I don't want it to sound like some dictatorship type of situation, although it felt like that at the time, but I can look back and and say like, I I definitely think he was looking out for my best interest um, because I wouldn't have been able to handle that. And so um, it was it was a lot. It sounds really cool. Don't get me wrong. It sounds amazing. But when you're actually living it, um, you're just you're you're in like this alternate universe type of mindset. Like you can't believe it's happening, although you appreciate it, although it's very hard because you can no longer be normal. You can't be a normal person anymore. That's over for you. Mm -hmm. It's literally like as soon as that happens, it's like night and day. Soon as you're famous, and this is one, pe- thing, uh, one thing that people don't know, once you are famous, you are famous forever. Mm-hmm. If, if, if you go outside and you see somebody from the real world season one, you're gonna be like, oh shit, that's right, you. Right. There's levels to fame, but you will be famous forever, mm-hmm. no matter what, till the day you die. So, you know, that was something that I, I it was hard for me to deal with. But what was the hardest lesson about it? Because in 2000, in that, in that time, what was it, 2009? I mean, I had Perez Hilton drawing cum on my face on his mm. website, you know? That was a lot to deal with as a, a young girl. Um, and also being so loved by everyone in my neighborhood. Like, oh, that's Amber. She's like one of the dudes, you know? Like, mm-hmm. that's what people would say. Like, she's, she's the homie. That's actually one of my toxic traits that I still think I'm the homie mm-hmm. that I can hang out with guys and the internet's, you know, they think if I'm in 20 feet of somebody, I'm fucking them. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was very difficult because I couldn't. And then also going back to Philly, right? I want to go see my friends. I want to go to a block party. My friend's cousin's having a fish fry down the street. Like, I want to go. And it's like, you can't, Mm -hmm. your life is different now and you cannot go there because now it's unsafe for you. Mm -hmm. Was Kanye the type of man who was protecting you from the public or protecting you from yourself or protecting, like, did you feel like he had your best interest at heart? Initially. Looking back, I could say halfway yes. Mm -hmm. At the time, I felt overly controlled by him, I felt like I didn't have a voice. I felt like um, that I couldn't be. I couldn't be myself anymore. I had to kind of be like a robot, like a, a shell of who I used to be. Mm-hmm. But I think that if maybe he told me what it was going to be like and gave me the opportunity to say yes, okay, that that sounds really hard to deal with, but I'll try. Mm-hmm. Or no, you know, maybe we can just be friends. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that. So I was kind of thrown to the sharks. And then it was like, you know, you have to deal with essentially millions of people that don't like you for no reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and mentally not, that's not, it's, it's very hard. But did they not like you because they didn't like him? No, I think they didn't like me because they felt like I was undeserving. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, who the fuck is this bald headed bitch? She's from Philly, she was a dancer. You know, why did he choose her? Why did he pick her? Why does she have that on? You and this know, was right after what, he was dating Salida, right? I don't know. But because then when you came along, and this is another thing we'll connect on in a second, me and you are both mixed. 
Mm-hmm. So when you first stepped on, it was the white girl, the, oh, yeah. the white girl, right? And then, like, because I still hear, you ain't black, you're Mexican, you know, I'm like, no, I'm black. <laughs> right. And then you find yourself fighting to make people understand that you're black. Right. Then you think you crazy because mm-hmm. you ain't black enough. Then you just fucking, fuck, you know? Yeah, then you throw, you throw hands. Then you throw hands. Right. Then they go, oh, she's black, you know? <laughs> but um, no, we want to get into that too. But like, so you, so you, did you, did you ever feel like you were a, because a lot of people look at Ye's relationships, like you, Kim, Bianca, whoever, and it's almost like you're a prop, or like you're a, not a prop, but like a, mm-hmm. you know, like a, I don't know, a showpiece. It's very like that, yes. It is very like that. But if you like that, then that's a great relationship for you. Mm-hmm. You know? Some some women enjoy that. Um, I, I remember, it's funny, I mean, and also, Jason, Let's be very fair. I've dated Kanye 14 years ago. Yeah. So I just want to put that out there. It's a long time ago. And for people watching wondering, why, Jason, why are you bringing this up? Because we have our moment. Mm -hmm. She comes on my show. We hash it out and become friends, like friend friends. Mm -hmm. And then I go to work with Kanye West. Oh, right. And I'm her friend. Oh, I'm going to get there. You know, okay. I, have a, I have a process. You okay. know what I mean? Let me do that. Yeah, you know. spill the tea. Okay, okay. because when you first came on my show, we never got into Kanye like that. Mm-hmm. Because it wasn't mm-hmm. about that. It was right, really trying to explore mm-hmm. and understand this world of slut walk and what you stand for. Mm-hmm. Where's all this coming from? And now having gotten to know you, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, you've always been standing on all this. It's just that people see you at different points or right. they get different entryways into the world of Amber Rose. And they're like, okay, once you really pay attention, you get it. So I get it now. So, I, so <laughs> for example... Uh, and this is going to sound crazy because it's, it's very hard to explain this without people being like, bitch, how are you explain? How are you mad at that? Yeah. Right. So, for an example, he would say, you know, we should go to the Vatican, we should go to Rome, we should go to art museums. And I'm arguing with him like, I just want to barbecue with loud music and I just want to invite people over and just vibe out and like smoke a little something and eat like a burger. Because I'm a South Philly girl, I need some normalcy yeah. to make me feel like Amber again. So the Vatican is cool, but I also need a barbecue <laughs> after when we get back to L.A. Right. I, and if you barbecue at the Vatican, you definitely ain't getting invited back. The, at all. At no, all. it's a wrap. It's over with. So I, I need a balance. I need to have a balance. And there was not a balance. Mm-hmm. Um, but again... I feel like maybe somebody like Kim, that was an ideal situation for her because she maybe comes more from that world and she understands his world better than I did. No, she comes from the world of her daddy is an attorney, her mother is somewhere in the kitchen pushing cookies, and then she fucked Ray J, made a sex tape, they sold it, she got famous, she found Kanye, she became super famous. Anyway. Because people have different pathways into this world. Some people want to be famous and some people just get it. I just got it. Right. And yeah. Kim didn't. But anyway, you ain't, I said it, not you. Okay, so then, did you ever go to the Vatican? We did. See? Ooh. Did you see the Pope? We did. Y'all saw the, did you meet the Pope? He was like out the window. Waving. Mm-hmm. Was he waving or was he saying, Kanye, go? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think he was, I think he was waving. But coming from South Philly and being the stripper girl on the bus signing autographs mm-hmm. and now at the Vatican waving to the Pope. Yeah. What is that experience like? Does that it's change surreal. the lens of the world for you? It does. Yeah. You you definitely look at the world uh, as Philly. It's a very small place. Um, once you start traveling and stuff like that, you're just like, wow. You know, you read about it. You, you know, you see stuff like growing up and you learn about it. But when you see it in person, it's definitely surreal. Why do Philly people have this Philly pride? You, Kevin Hart, everybody from Philly get on my damage. Y'all get on my nerves about Philly. Because we don't win shit. That's why. We're mad. We're angry. <laughs> really? Yeah, we don't win shit. And most of our lives, the Phillies never really won. The Eagles never really won. Not until we got older. And we just got an attitude about it. But where does the pride come from? Is it, it's not the sports. Is it the sports or is, is it just like it, um, meek? Like everybody from Philly just loves Philly. I want to say I love Philly. You don't? I would say Philly made me who I am. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I love Philly because I, you know, my neighborhood was a lot of, you know, drug addicts, um, drug dealers, uh, prostitutes. Uh, it was not, I got my bike stolen. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom had got me some um, rollerblades stolen. 
you know, fighting every single day. I had to fight girls every day. Because you were pretty, because you were light skinned, because. For anything, I bet I don't like your outfit. I want to fight you. <sighs> okay, bitch. You know. And really? Yeah. I remember my one time my mom walked me to the schoolyard, and this kid was like, "I hate your fucking dress. If I had a gun, I would shoot you." And I was like, "Mom!" And she came back and said, "He said he's gonna shoot me because he don't like my dress." And then, you know, it was a different time. My, my mom had to handle that situation for me. I can't. Yeah. Okay, but Jalen Hurts is like the finest football player, quarterback in the world right now. Yeah, he's a, he's a very handsome man. Mm -hmm. Would you date him? Uh, I don't, uh. <laughs> we'll Google to see if Jalen has a woman because I don't want to create no problems. Yeah, there. I'm not, uh, I'm not looking, let's just say, I'm not okay. looking for nothing. Okay, so you're with Kanye, you're leaving the Vatican, the Pope is saying goodbye. <laughs> okay, now you're. Not just the us, <laughs> like. He's Wait, out the window. Was that before the Hennessy and Taylor Swift thing? At, oh, yeah. That was before that. Yeah. And then y'all drunk asses went over there to MTV <laughs> and acted out and got just cut up. When you're having these experiences, that bring did that that kind of reminded you of Philly, because that was kind of hood. It was my halfway my fault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> well, the him going on stage is not my fault. Yeah. But so, okay, so we're I want because you told me the story <laughs> in my house how y'all got kicked out. Or how he, whatever, how he got kicked out. Y'all had, you had to pack up your things and y'all had to get out of there. That, I thought that was hilarious. We did. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Um, so we get, we're getting ready for the VMAs and uh, we go downstairs into the car service and I'm like, you know what, babe? You're a fucking rock star. You need a bottle of Henny. Like, let's just go to the red carpet and just have the Henny and take pictures. You know, I'm... I'm a South Philly hood bitch. Mm -hmm. in encouraging one of the biggest artists in the world who's going to the biggest night of the world with the other people to go get that bottle of Hennessy from the corner liquor store and- No, it's back upstairs. Oh, just upstairs. So he was like, yo, that's, that's fire. Let's just do it, fuck it. And then he runs back upstairs. He gets the bottle of Henny. We just take a shots in the car, it's lit. I'm like fucking dancing on him and shit. We just having the time of our life. You know, at that time we don't have kids, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just, we are living our best lives in that car. And it's good at that time. Okay, let's, let, I just want to be fair that I, we definitely loved each other. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of great times, me and Kanye. We, one thing we used to do, we used to dance all over the world. We used to go and dance everywhere. We would just have so much fun together, right? It was very difficult for me to deal with the fame, so it in turn created a lot of arguments because there was things that he would want me to wear that I did not want to wear. I didn't want to wear stuff like that because it was very like revealing and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm really not that girl. I'm this girl, mm -hmm. you know. So I just want to be fair when I say that. Okay. So we have the bottle head of Hennessy. We having a good old time. We get to on the red carpet. It's fucking lit. It's like everything you would think the VMAs would be. Mm -hmm. Like it's fun or everything you grew up watching on the VMAs. And um, yeah, so we, we get in, we're sitting down, I think it's like Solange and uh, Beyonce is kind of like next to me on this side, he's on that side. And I'm like, nah, 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 I'm talking, whatever. And all of a sudden I look on stage and he's up there. So that's why I said it's halfway my fault because I encouraged the Hennessy. But I did not tell him to go. Why he didn't hold his hand and say, leave the little white girl alone? Oh, he was already gone. He was gone? So I'm like talking over here. He's sitting next to me. Yeah. And then I, I, I'll i never forget it. I saw Beyonce's face. And I'm like, what is she looking at? And I look up and he's up there. So if there was no point for me to prevent that from happening. He, he, you know, he was fast. So now we know for sure we can't blame Jada for Will slapping the shit out of Chris. Because he, he was just gone. Pro probably. Okay. Maybe. So so he does that with the girl. Mm -hmm. He's whisked away. Do they come to you and say, Miss Rose, can you please gather I, your But thing? I just want to say that <laughs> he initially felt bad. Okay. Because he didn't want to take that away from Taylor. That wasn't his main objective. He did not want to do that. He just felt like, as most people felt like, Single Ladies was a better video. It was more viral. More people were doing the dance. And he felt like Beyonce was robbed of that, mm. although it was not his place to do that on Beyonce's behalf. But he felt strongly about that, and um, he instantly did feel bad, though. Mm. But was that the first time you saw Ye's impulsivity? Because I have 
since learned it and been a part of it and seen what it feels like and what it looks like. And I couldn't imagine like that close to it or ever for that long. But like, was that your first time you saw like the impulsivity on that extreme? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Was that a red flag or did you, or was it the Hennessy that you just, you placed blame on the Hennessy? I really didn't know, Jason. You got to think I was very young. I was overwhelmed with life mm-hmm. at that time. So I didn't, I never really thought about, was it the Hennessy? Is he impulsive or is he crazy? Or Like I, I was just like, damn, that's unfortunate. And then we, we went straight to Japan after that. Right. No more Hennessy for a week? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're whisked away. You're out of the MTV Awards. The whole world is reacting. Now, of course, you're getting more and more famous by the day. Yeah. Because you're in a part of all these wild moments too. Right. Okay. So at what point did you realize, I'm in danger. I need to get out of here. I just think uh, when I just felt like my mental health was not okay, um, that I needed to e- escape that relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and I did, and I, I, you know, you gotta think, I didn't have money. <laughs> like that whole time, I was on his time, I was on his flights, I was doing things that he wanted to do so I didn't, I didn't have money. So when I moved into the apartment, I had to owe three months rent. Like they did me a favor. Oh no, we're not gonna skip. No, no, no. I no, don't no. want to tell the whole no, story. No, 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 no. Okay, because here's the deal: Were you not saving money on the side? You're at the Vatican and the Pope is saying, "What money? You huh? weren't you never given money? Like, did you? Were you ever? Because like Floyd will put money. I, in. I did. I, I didn't it need it. I didn't need it. He took me shopping every day. He paid for everything. I didn't need money. Like I didn't, I didn't have, I mean, he had like assistants and people like, hey, I I want a green tea, go get her green tea. Like I didn't need money. (laughs) At the time you didn't until you needed that three month deposit. Yes, that's when things got real. What I'm trying to say is (laughs) you've become mother to the women and teaching these women like, Mm You, you're te- you're te- I think you're teaching women a lot of things now based on what you've been through. Totally, so yeah. So at the time, when go get the green tea, go get the furs, go get this, get the car, get all, you mm-hmm. got everything, you don't need nothing. You needed to be tucking away a little. a little. For sure, but I mean, tell that to a 25-year-old that's with the most one of the most famous men in the world and you you everyone's waiting on you hand and foot. You're not thinking about that. Right. But that's that, why it's we not talk, a thing. But that's why we're talking about because it's a 25 year old there with a rapper right now being mm-hmm. lit on Instagram. Oh, totally. Yeah. Who needs to be tucking it away? And she's probably not. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So now she used the word escape. I didn't say escape. It t- I'm taking you to a scene from my favorite movie. Everybody knows I love Angela Bassett. <laughs> Remember in Ike and Tina when they're driving in the back of the car, they get He's to so the Ramada Inn, messy. they had this big old fight. And then Ike goes to sleep, and then Tina goes in the bathroom, and then runs across the freeway, and she runs, she escapes with a white suit on. With a white suit on. Uh-huh. When you explain leaving to me, and this is me, Jason Lee, the fan of the industry and, and culture, talking to Amber Rose, my friend, on the patio, and you're just as a friend describing the experience of the whole becoming you. It was escape. Why you never tell nobody? Because it's so long ago and it's so not relevant to my life. I've had so many um, amazing moments, having children, getting married, you know. I mean, it, the reason why I even uh, attempt to have somewhat of a conversation about Kanye because it is, he was my stepping stone into fame. <clears throat> and so like, I, you know, I understand that and I, I know that people are very curious about that, so. Um, I don't mind telling bits and pieces, but I don't know. Maybe I should write a book one day. Yes. It's a very long story, Jason. We've we, we've had this story, but it's a very, it's a long story. But I did wind up leaving. I was very happy to be gone. And um, when I left, I had no money. You had nothing. I had absolutely nothing. I had no money at all. And I... You know, did you have? You didn't even have credit. I didn't have shit. I didn't have nothing. I had a passport. But you didn't get on a plane to go back to see the Pope. You went down the street to get an apartment, and didn't have the credit, and had to come up with the three months. Down. I literally begged the owner of the building, and I said, "I will do everything I can to get you. Give me three months." And I went, 
I created a Twitter because, you know, previously I did not have social media. I called Nicki Minaj and I was like, sis, can you please just tweet that I have a Twitter? And I probably got maybe 350,000 people in 24 hours to follow me. Um, created an email for bookings, hit this email. I was doing my own bookings and I was doing the Chitlin circuit. When I tell you the Chitlin circuit, I was doing North Carolina, Memphis, Every book Atlanta. Every Listen, two, uh, 2,500 all in with flights. 25,000? No, 100. 2,500? 2,500 all in with, with flight, flight in the back a... of the plane by the bathroom. So you was making 199 By get... myself. Right. But I did it. Yeah. I did the groundwork. So when, when anyone ever says like, oh, all, you got all this money from this, that, and the third, I got my own money. I made my first million in 2011. Mm -hmm. So that's Let's my give it up for the first million. Thank you. She made four hundred thousand with one photo. We're gonna get to that too. Wait, so okay, you. <laughs> I like talking to my friends when I get. To, okay, fine. Remember that that OnlyFans Bush photo? DM check the thing because you're a business. Oh, the, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't put that on OnlyFans, did I? Joe, did you put that on OnlyFans? No, that oh. That was for the Oh, that's for Okay, well, somewhere I know you made a lot of money. You're a businesswoman, but right then you're Amber Rose who waited till he left. Hmm. And you ran out the house to go find this apartment, found the apartment, and never went back and didn't leave with nothing. Nope. I, the only thing I took from his house was uh, some towels, toothpaste, toilet paper, maybe some paper towels. I didn't touch any of his jewelry, his clothes, nothing. And you didn't say bye? No. Okay, you know, why did you choose to leave that way? Because I felt stuck. I felt like I had to be free. And I, and I was tired of being controlled in that way. Again, disclaimer, he, I can look back now and know that he was probably doing it for my own good because I did not know how to navigate fame. But I don't want people to think that like, it was just a super controlling situation. You weren't chained to the house, you weren't? No, no, I wasn't, no, I wasn't. But for me, uh, I was unhappy at the end. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I was very happy. At the end, I was unhappy. Um, I was getting cheated on a lot. <laughs> so and You know what I don't like about you? You be playing, because you give a lot of people grace. And I love that the thing I hate, I like the least is also the thing we all love the most, that you choose to let people live. Who oh, I let everybody you. live. Yeah, I let everybody live. I, it's not up to me to, 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 to do that. I mean, listen, when I was younger, there was things that I said that I look back now, I'm like, why did I say that? You know? But I, yes, I let people live. Mm. Because ultimately, you know, you got to find out the hard way. Mm -hmm. I had to find out the hard way. She had to find out the hard way. Other people have to find out things the hard way. And I just, I, I sit back and I'm patient and I let it all play out, mm -hmm. Jason. That's Even the, when you know it's happening? That's the type of person I am. Is that a Libra? I feel like I Libras know. are cunning. Like you all can, you know, you're not like me. I'm emotional. I mean, I'm strategic, mm. but I will, a, a Leo's always gonna, uh, you know, but Libras, I feel like. I was raised as like a, a, a boy though. Right. Like I'm the oldest, I'm a, a, the daughter. I have two brothers, two nephews, two sons and all uncles. I am a grown ass man mm -hmm. mentally. Mm -hmm. So I can handle a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? But. Sometimes for me, I feel like when you come out and you say something, it almost makes it worse for yourself. Mm -hmm. When you know how it's going to play out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You just got to sit back and be like, told you. I didn't tell you, but I told you. So you don't say goodbye. You know, one of my exes did that to me once. Like, mm -hmm. we had, I thought everything was great. And then one day I went to work and then they just left. And mm -hmm. that, that was such an emotional experience because people want closure. Did you, when you left, for you, you already had the closure? Oh, yeah, I was, I was, I was done. Okay. Yeah, I was done. Did you think about giving him closure, and did you all ever have a chance for to? For what? Him? I was, he, he had already been, he was already living his best life. Okay. So, um, and I'm like, well, if you're living your best life, I want to go, I want to be free, and that's okay, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and then I was. And then I met Wiz a year, a year later. 
and and I know you're still in love with. I mean, I know he has a girl, and I know you all the, are cool, and I know y'all look good together. Y'all just had the whole gangster birthday bash for bash, mm -hmm. and and you all co-parent well. And look how you light up when I say his name, and I'm sure he does. I love too. him to death. I will always love him. And and I've heard that that's your spirit, um, not spirit, not spirit animal, but that's your soulmate. Mm -hmm. And you're probably his soulmate. For sure. So why aren't why 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 aren't y'all soul to soul? Because it doesn't work like that. Mm. So you you can love someone on a completely different level and not want to be with them intimately, sexually, uh, or be in love. And I think that's where we are. He's very happy with his girlfriend, Amy. I love her so much. Um, she's a, a big part of our family. She helps with raise uh, Sebastian. And I love her for that, you know? And I think that... The in love turns into a type of love that's like your family member. And I think that's what me and Wiz And that's what have. you all have gotten there. Yeah. But it hadn't always been that way. How did you get to that? Because I don't think you liked one of his other girlfriends. I can't remember her name, but there was a girl he had before. Because you and him are very involved as parents. And I, if I can, or if I think back over just all the reporting we've ever done of all of you, there's mm -hmm. always like those moments, holidays, birthdays, there's always you're at your dad's house, your mom's house, not mm -hmm. go to your dad's house or go to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you guys have done a really great job of co-parenting. At mm -hmm. least it looks that way. Um, was, there, was there ever a time period, I think there was, where there was a girl he had that you may not have liked who was around Bastion? How did you do with that? No, I, I, I'm i not that person. Okay. So like as uh, the mom, I prefer my baby daddies to date women that they uh, enjoy dating. Yeah, be, well, because it's more stability for my children when okay. they go over there. But if my child says, Mama, I don't like this person, you know, that's when I have to call, you know, their dads or something and be like, you know, Sebastian said that he doesn't like this person, that like what's going on or is he being spoiled or like what's, you know, but it's all about communication. Mm -hmm. You know, but I never not liked any of his girlfriends. Mm -hmm. They were all cool. I mean, a, a couple of them were very quiet. Like, they would pull up to my house with him to pick up my son. They wouldn't say hi to me. They are probably afraid you're from Philly. But it's like, you can say hi, girl. Like, you're pulling up to my house. If yeah. I'm not, like, jumping in the car to beat your ass, it's okay. Yeah. You know? Okay, wait. So, you're with Ye, and he's cool. But, like, you get with Wiz, and Wiz is fine. Wiz is good, Wiz is good looking. Mm -hmm. He's, he, you know, now he out there working out in spandex, giving this. <laughs> no and he doing what he's doing. He thought in it. You're a thought, He's so Wiz. funny. Mm -hmm. um, when you see him thought, and are you creative directing his? Um, <laughs> I am not. No. <laughs> how, are you, how did he learn? Because that was not the black and yellow that we knew. Like, where is he getting? No, it? I'll text him and be like, "Not the balls in the camera." <laughs> it's a lot, you know. And yeah. then he'll laugh, you know. But that—that's my dog. That's but my. He dog. knows what he's doing, though. I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure he does. I'm not. I am not there to <laughs> participate in his shenanigans. Okay. You mentioned Nicki Minaj. Let's just spin the block on that real quick. You I, you are the reason why she was on Monster. You introduced her to that situation. Mm -hmm. Did you get credit for that or did people know that? I don't think I got credit for that. I mean, I didn't do it for credit. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not to take, like, Nicki is, she's amazing when it comes to, like, writing raps. Like, she really, I've, I've seen it in person. It's really, it's a sight to see, yeah. you know? So, um, all credit to her. I c connected that. I I said I think Monster would be a great song that she could be on, um, but she she did that on her own. Because if the verse was whack, he would have never used it. What's your relationship with her now? Uh, we don't talk, but not because there's beef. I think we just live very different lives. Mm -hmm. That's all. Well, when you see what she's gone through in her relationship, do you stay out of it? It's not your business, or do you? What do you think? Yeah, that's not my business. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like everyone goes through shit, you know. You just got to talk to the people that are close to you. Were they invited to Bash's birthday party? No, I haven't spoken to Nikki in a long time. So that wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't be like on the list. Um, although it, although if I would have thought about it, I would have invited her. But you don't There's really no do beef. the celebrity friend thing, right? I do not, no. Why aren't you mixy when you have the ability to be mixy? I mean, you can be friends with anybody. You can be in the, I mean, you're in the mix when you want to be, but. I just like good people. Mm -hmm. So if you're a good person, whether you're a celebrity or not. And by the way, I have a lot of friends that people don't know mm -hmm. that I'm friends with because I'm very, like Chris Rock, for an example, 
one of my dearest friends for about 13 years. Really? Nothing intimate. If anything, I mean, he was like giving me advice on relationships. I'm giving him him advice on dating, and um, but no one knows that because I'm just not that person. I'm very, I, I don't use people for cloud, or I don't post or do anything like that. Um, and you know, we went out to coffee in New York, like we have done so many times before, and happened to get. Uh, photographed and it's like this whole thing. That's why I didn't even say nothing. I was just like, Chris, you're not saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. Who cares? But what advice would you get? What did you give him advice on how, what he should have done with the Will Smith thing? Because I mean, Philly girl up stage, somebody come up there and slap you. You're probably gonna do what you did to Jocelyn. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not gonna touch on that. But yes, we've we've had uh, several conversations about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so anyway, so you didn't get any credit or no points on the Nikki Monster thing. I don't think so. Could have no. got something. You should have got something. I should have got $20 million for my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, but I didn't get nothing. I should have got money for the wax figure that he used without my consent, but naked, but I didn't get nothing. I didn't get any money from anything. Like I should have I I you know, I I should have been compensated in some way for using my likeness in, in so many songs and the wax figure. I had a guy come up to me like, I, I, I was one of the people that created the wax figure of you. And I'm like, I was fucking naked. No one hit me up and said, is this okay? Can we pay you to use your likeness? Nothing. Like that, I mean, that is pretty fucked up. And yet you still give grace though. I give grace for my mental health, mm -hmm. not for them. I mean, there was the one finger in the butt thing, though. That kind of got, I mean, that had to feel good. I mean, that was like a little dig, no pun intended, that you know, like, had to feel good. It wasn't meant to be a factual statement, yeah. but it was, it, you know, he said he owns my child. Yeah. He said if it wasn't for him, Wiz would have never met me and had a child. So then in turn, he owns my Is child. It? And I was like, I mean, You're not just... to laugh, but it's kind of crazy. He's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. You don't own my child, but you missed my fingers in your ass, and that's why I said it. But it wasn't, it wasn't. Okay, I have a, a factual question. statement. I have a question. <laughs> By the way, off camera, there's a lot of things I will not bring up in this interview because I really like her, and we really like talk about shit. Like mm -hmm. we be getting into shit, not Kanye's ass shit, but shit. You know what I mean? Okay, <laughs> so. Do you think a man who likes a finger in his ass is gay? No. I don't either. No, not at all. No, if I had a prostate, I would want something in my ass. I mean, I have a prostate. I just don't want nobody to put their finger up my ass because what happens if somebody puts their finger up your ass and you ain't, you know, you had Taco Bell for lunch or something, you know? I mean, I think that that comes with anal sex. <laughs> I think that's, that's a well, part of it that it can happen. So, yeah. you know, you're taking a gamble. You're rolling them nice, baby. You are. You are. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so now you're out that relationship and you've learned co-parenting. The reason why I bring up co-parenting is because I meet a I meet a lot of people who have just this crazy baby daddy, baby mama drama. The mm -hmm. kids are in the middle of it. Kids are watching mom and dad. They're learning behavior. So I, 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 the reason I bring up a lot of these stories is you've lived a life that you've chosen not to share. Mm -hmm. But I think you've had a lot of experiences that I think a lot of young women can benefit from, and I know how much you're an advocate for women. So what is one of the things, or what are the things that you do to intentionally make sure that the co-parenting uh, thing is working? Don't bring up anything but the children. Not who they're dating, not who they're fucking, not who you saw them with, not what, they, what happened in the past in your previous relationship with them. None of that matters. As long as the children are safe, and they're present fathers, and they're helping out in any way that they can. Everything else is off limits, you and that's how no, you, you. You guys don't talk about you, nothing. Nothing. I don't talk about nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't bring up nothing. I don't ask nothing. I don't say nothing. I don't do nothing. So it's all about my children. That is it. That's the only way you can co-parent. But then you get into music. You, you're recording music. Your art, your men in music. Do you do you even seek creativity on that? Like, will you say, oh, "What do you think about this?" or "Should I do this? Should I do that?" Or do you leave that alone too? What do you mean, like with my ex? Yeah, with Slash's dad. Oh no, I I, I canceled all that shit. 
No, not him. Not him yet. We're still with Bash's dad. We're like mm-hmm. with Wiz. So like mm-hmm. Wiz or Kanye. When you were in doing your thing or coming up, were you thinking of doing music? Because I know you've done music now. Yeah. Were you? Would you ever ask Wiz if you only say focus on Bastion? I don't want to be in the music business. I tried it. I don't like it. Over? Yeah, I don't. Want, I don't want to do it. And all of my music I made with Slash's dad. So I don't want. I don't. I don't. I don't want to work with him. I want us to co-parent, and, and that's it. So she moved on from Black and Yellow, then you were single for a while, and then you got in a relationship with AE. No, then I was with 21 Savage. I was going to skip over that one. We can go there. Did you love him? Oh, that's him? my dog, yeah. You were in love with him. Oh, yeah, that was, um, that was my homie, for sure. So why you didn't marry him to make him a, uh, a citizen? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, it just was, we were not there. No? No, we're not there. Mm-mm. Was he fun? Yeah, he's fun. Yeah, he's cool. We had a good time he, he, together. He kind of scares me sometimes. He just looks like he's not like he's always ready for some action. He's just introverted. That's all. Is he? Yeah, he's very, very introverted. So when he knows you, he'll open up and he's like fun and cool and you know cracking jokes and laughing. But he's just introverted. So from the outside looking in, you just think he's just me mugging. And- but you're, you you give me diverse, eclectic tea. Why would you rap a rap a rap? Like, was it just a, were you trying to figure out a mixtape relationship, coffee table book, or what was <laughs> what? happening? <laughs> what you mean? They, I mean, they, yay rapper, whiz rapper. They love me, Jason. What can I say? Like, they love me. But I'm not that, out looking for that. But is that the type of dude you were in the hood dating? Rappers and like, No, hood? no, no. They just, you know, listen. You can't put a bunch of beautiful, famous, rich people in a room and not all expect us to all fuck each other, or date each other at some point. Well, like, true. That's just realistic. And you know, um, I, I never reached out to nobody that I dated. By the way, mind you, like I've never reached out to no one. They've reached out to me. Can I take you out on a date? Can I take you out to eat? Can I get your number? Can I, you know? So that's how all that shit transpired from from Yay. To Wiz, to Twenty One, to Machine Gun Kelly, to uh, wait, does Machine Gun Kelly else? really have a big penis? Because we, J- we Jason, were, we were having this conversation yesterday, and somebody said he. They I heard, don't remember. You don't? No. Hmm. <laughs> that says a lot. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Okay. Best sex you ever had. That was a song R. Kelly came out with. No, I'm not bringing up R. Kelly because he's in prison. But Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not a talker. Thank you, thank you for the pink straw, by the way. I have to catch you. You know, I'd be trying to book Amber on the day where you're ready to burn the earth down. Amber will call me and say, call Joseph. I'm ready today. By the time we figure it out, here I am zen, like a little bowl with a <sighs> thing in it. It's good. It's good for my children, Jason. Yeah. You know, my kids are like, uh, Sebastian's old enough to Google. and He's see, smart. See, yeah, he's so smart. Both of my kids, I'm very lucky. But, you know, I do it for them. I give people grace for them. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because somewhere Sebastian is right now on his iPad trying to figure out what she was doing at the Jason Lee show. He's smart. I mean, he's yeah. constantly figuring things out. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Don't remember. <laughs> oh, my God. You're funny. All right, anyway, moving along. Hey, Machine Gun Kelly. You know, he... he That's my dog. And guess what? He tattooed out everything black, so he's black from the waist up. Oh, I'm here trying we go. to figure out if he's black from the waist down. Let me tell you something, though. <laughs> out of all of my relationships, besides my ex-husband, he was the only one that apologized to me. He was the only one that came up to me and said, Amber, you know what? You were one of the best girlfriends I ever had, and you didn't deserve to be treated that way. Um, the only one. Mm. So shout out to you, MGK. Shout out to you. 21 Savage didn't apologize. Did he do something? What did he do wrong? I'm not. I'm not. That is so old. <laughs> he Jason. did a lot. Google it. I don't know because honestly, no, people think not... I know every detail. I really don't Google I it. I think we just went our separate ways. Like sometimes Does he still it's... owe you an apology? No. If he put it in a mixtape. My whole Here's my whole thing, right? If you know we were together and you know how cool I am, right? Why when all this narrative comes out about me, no one ever comes out and says, she's not like that. This is not her. She's a good person. You know, when you do interviews, Amber was a good person. Just like I could say, yeah, 21, that's my dog. MGK, that was my dog. Wiz, I would love him forever. Kanye, you know, we had our shit. I was young. 
but I can't fully blame everything on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, just take accountability for mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. But I think the internet and the time that I came out, people are so comfortable with just throwing me away. And it has always been that way. And it really affected my mental health over time because it's just like, why am I constantly nice to people? Why do I constantly give people grace? You know, and I constantly get shitted on. Mm -hmm. Like it just and so becomes the answer unfair. is the kids. Now, yeah, it's the it's the kids. Mm -hmm. It's the kids because I don't want my kids to see me in in a negative light. I I I don't even do slut walk anymore because I feel like slut walk has turned into something that's out of my hands that I don't fully agree with. And so, yeah, I'm just I'm you grow and you just become a different person. And, it's, and I love the fact that you're so open and sharing it because even in this conversation as we're going through the layers, which is what I wanted to do, so I'm glad it's coming through, is that I never saw you as a vulnerable person. Mm. I saw you as a strong person because the interview when you pulled up on me, yeah. and matter of fact, before you pulled up, you got my number from somebody and you called me on the phone. I'll never forget. I was in my little studio apartment. I had just started Hollywood Unlocked mm -hmm. and it was this number and I answered and you were like, hey, this is Amber Rose. Um, you're looking for me. What's up? You know? So I've always thought of you, and I think when people see you and you lead the slut walk and you're getting everybody to embrace uh, themselves in that way, in all diverse backgrounds and stuff, mm -hmm. um, you see somebody that you think is like really, really strong. And I've, over time, I've, just, I've seen the vulnerability. So I, I didn't know it existed. I'm thinking maybe people didn't think about it. I mean, like I that. think I'm strong because I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. I think that anybody that has been through what I've been through would have off themselves mm -hmm. already, 100%. You know, dealing with the shit that I, I've dealt with on the internet for 14 years, um, no human being should endure that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even now, I have PTSD. I microdose on ketamine from my doctor. Um, there's things that, you know, you ever hear the saying, check on your strong friends? Mm -hmm. That was me. The mm -hmm. pandemic, it definitely um, had a number on me. Like, it was, it, it really fucked me up mentally. I just had a baby. Um, my baby was three months when the pandemic hit and I was in a tumultuous, shitty ass relationship. I got stuck in the house with him and, uh, you know, it, it just kind of all just bubbled up and I was like, I'm not okay. I need help. Mm -hmm. And that's when I finally, I, I found a doctor and got on like this whole vitamin regimen and, um, ketamine, which I was very scared at first of ketamine because I don't. I don't even, you know me, I don't even smoke weed. Mm -hmm. I've never tried Coke or Molly or- You'll smoke a Newport though. Yeah, a Marble Light, cause I'm classy. Amber will smoke that uh, cigarette. <laughs> but at least she's one of the people that cares which way the wind is blowing the smoke. I, I do, like, I'm Damn. very, yeah. Yeah, I don't do that to people. Yeah. But I mean, it's your vice, whatever, it's not- It is my vice, it is my vice, I don't we really drink. At, cause we were at Nice Guy, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, and Angus Cloud snorted all that cocaine off the table. Oh, he died. He died. He did die. You, I remember do that. Do you remember we were outside on the patio talking to me? He didn't know who I was. He didn't know who you were. Yeah. I don't even know if he knew where he was at. And he liked you and you connected with him. And I think he followed you. You follow each other. And, and, mm -hmm. I, and I felt like you were well, being had, nurturing. Yes. You know what I mean? Well, he had initially asked me for my number. Mm -hmm. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, you I'll give you my yeah. yeah I'll, I'll give you my Instagram and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, I felt like he was a little drunk. But then when we saw that, but the I was sad like, part poor about baby. That, the sad part about that, because I never talked about it mm -hmm. until after he passed away. I mean, you just said, check on your strong, fr strong friends. You'll look at Angus Cloud and say, he's on the biggest show, yeah, super yeah. famous. But then when we saw him in that vulnerable state mm -hmm. with all the friends around, it's like, damn, like we got to care about our people a little bit more because yeah. he was too young to die he's like that. He's a baby, yeah. yeah. Yep. So you're yeah. that strong person on the outside who privately is going through <clears throat> all of this mess. And then COVID was killer for me and everybody else. Cause one, you're trapped in general, but totally. now you're trapped in this situation. Mm -hmm. um, how did you work through it? Cause the duality of being Amber Rose to the public. I, I will tell you, I will tell you, I was, and I, I'm, I'm gonna give this to you, Jason. Mm -hmm. I was very much suicidal. I've, I've been probably suicidal for three years, maybe three and a half years. Um, I have to microdose on ketamine. It's the only thing that saved my life mm -hmm. and my children. My children saved my life because, um, you know, I won't, I won't leave my children no matter how bad it gets mentally. But, um, it got so bad I had to call a suicide hotline. You? I called a suicide hotline. 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. Which is crazy because, I mean, it's good that you did. Let me be very clear. It's good Thanks. that you did because a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. But you being Amber Rose calling a public hotline that, yeah, could, be, that yep. could be recorded and released. Mm -hmm. How did, You weren't nervous of that at all? You didn't think you just were desperate? I was, to... I was not okay. Mm. Yeah, I was not okay. And, uh, you know, I don't really have much family that I'm close with. And I think that's why um, in a lot of my relationships, even people that you don't know publicly, but um, they know that and they take advantage of that, um, that I don't have a really big support system around me. And so, uh, yeah, it just I had a really, really, really bad day and I called a suicide hotline and they were like, from, from one to 10, how likely are you to kill yourself? And I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna kill myself, it's like a zero, but I want to. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. I feel like I want to. I don't know why I feel like this. But what I found out doing research and therapy is that when I had a baby, right, your hormones are out of whack. Then the pandemic hit. So your cortisol and everything is all out of whack, right? Then I'm in a terrible, shitty ass relationship. So then my hormones are like this, right? So then people start going outside and I'm like, I'm, I'm fucked up mm. mentally because everything is completely mm. out of whack in my body. And your world online is loud as hell. And then everyone is like, you ain't shit. You don't deserve love. Um, ha ha, that's why your fucking baby daddy left you. Uh, you fumbled with Wiz. Uh, Kanye upgraded. Kim Kanye. Yeah, like, all that. you know, so so I'm, not, I'm dealing with internal shit, external shit. And I'm just one person, Jason. I'm, I, I, you know, I can only consume so much. So, um, I will, I will say that uh, ketamine has helped me a lot. I know that some people microdose on mushrooms. Don't get any street what, what, what drugs. Is, what is ketamine? So the, they, they, so the reason why I was scared initially is because ketamine is tech is, is a street drug mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I get mine from a doctor, which I suggest everyone else do the same if they want to try that for PTSD or depression or anxiety. Um, and it, uh, it's just like a, a little square. It melts under your tongue and you just do it at night before you go to sleep. Does it help you sleep? Uh, yeah, you kind of just do it like, I don't like to feel high. So I do it like while I'm dozing off and I, I exhaust myself so I can go to bed at night. I'm the same way. Yeah, I will mm -hmm. do everything during, like right after this, I'm going to the gym. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you wake up and you, you know, you're fine. And then over time, it kind of helps you regulate the chemicals in your body so you feel less depressed and less suicidal and stuff like that. But a lot of people love you. You know a lot of people love you. A yeah. lot of people love you. A lot of people do respect you. Mm -hmm. Do you, how do you not internalize those feelings and then lean on those people when you need them like that. Like, cause even we're not close every day, but you could call me or you could have been, you know what I mean? Like, do you not feel there's anybody in your orbit? I was also raised to not be a burden. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be a burden to anyone, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, I don't want to call you and hinder your fucking day cause I'm going through something. I just, I'm a G and I'm like, I'm a G, I can handle this, yeah, you know? Well, there's days we all can't handle shit. I mean, I, that's why I call the suicide hotline. Well, okay, don't call 1-800. Next time, put me, you, and <laughs> Tiffany on a three-way uh, FaceTime. I will. I will take that into we've had those three-way FaceTimes before. We did, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, because that, but that right there, I think, was so powerful is that I would never have thought that about you. You know what I mean? No, no, because I'm quiet, Jason. Mm -hmm. I don't get on my story and cry. Mm -hmm. You know, I go in the shower and cry. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get on my story and say, hey, guys, I'm fucking suicidal and I need help. Because I don't have faith in the internet. The internet has been nothing but mean to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't imagine people would be like, we're here for you, Amber. We support you, anything you need. I'm gonna assume the internet's gonna be like, die, bitch, mm -hmm. kill yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just, I just stay to myself and I just fucking raise my kids and, and deal with it. But I will say I, I am doing much better now mentally, so. Can we just give a clap for doing better mentally? Yeah. Because, because you know, these, it's interesting, but you know, like we're looking at what's going on with Wendy Williams and you know, uh, when you were at my house that night, we called her 
and to, to congratulate on her lifetime story and yeah. you know, my relationship with her and she loves you and all that. And it's like when you see what she's going through, we knew what she was battling behind the scenes, but we knew like a lot of people around her knew and there weren't a lot of people that could stop it. Right. For, for us who may publicly front face and look like we got all together, shit, sometimes the world, even when you do have it all together, it feels like it's just falling the fuck apart. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I think people knowing like you should find the courage to call somebody or the hotline and we'll put the number up right here. So if you're uh, suffering or struggling with challenges uh, like what she just shared, you should call too. Yeah, and I just wanted to, you know, be vulnerable for my fans or people that are tuning into your show um, that, you know, one, money doesn't buy you mental health. It just it just does not. It, everything can... Don't think it's easier for, for somebody because uh, it looks glamorous from the outside. And, you know, people know that from... Um, you know, looking at social media, it's not what it seems. It, it's really not. And, you know, people are dealing with a lot. Like the the DJ from the Ellen DeGeneres show, he was yeah. always laughing and smiling. Twitch. Twitch you know? And, um, you know, outwardly when I have to tickle my kids and be like, come on, we got to come and eat, you know? And internally I want to kill myself. Um, it can look like I'm okay, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, when you're not. So I, I suggest that, yeah, just talk to somebody if you're out there and you, you feel alone. And be a little kinder online. Because I'll tell you, I yeah. tout myself as being the king of the internet, strong, and I'm very strong. And I, because I've had to trick myself into looking at social media like, yeah, I ain't real. Like, I literally have had to trick for sure, myself. For sure, yeah. No matter who, and they've said the craziest things about me. First, I started internalizing it, but and didn't really realize that I was internalizing it until I started feeling that weight being put on me. And then I had to go, you know what? I got to check out. Because yeah. if I don't check out from what you're doing, you, uh, sometimes, then I'm going to be in that situation. I really feel like, again, looking at people on the outside, not knowing our wiring on the inside, not knowing what we're going through, because we're going through the same shit you are, mm -hmm. just in front of millions of people. She's going through it in front of more millions than me. So just have a little bit more compassion, I think. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yep. So you're trapped in the house during COVID. Yes, with a newborn. With a newborn baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the man that you are in love with. Now, no disrespect, I know AE, hey, um, y'all weren't on the same level. In terms of public fame, public eye, I mean, we knew who he was behind the scenes with the music and he was hanging with Tiger, but then like you're Amber Rose, you had already built your brand on that. I didn't even know how y'all got together, but y'all get together. Then you have the baby, and then you find out he's allegedly, I'll say, but not allegedly, a serial cheater. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I said somewhere yeah. online, I said like 12 women or something. I, I posted 12 because it was 12 at the time, but then I found out more after. And then you messaged the girls. Oh, yeah. I'm going I'm to I'm pull up. I'm a pull Amber up. Rose slides in. Oh, yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm like Cardi. We're the same. Me and Cardi the are the same. same. It's a Libra thing. No, we call in. We pulling up. We doing what we got to do. <laughs> Yeah, not literally pulling up because no, but like you know, I don't want to go to with, jail. Amber Rose with millions of followers mm -hmm. is going to find that one with the 322 and a half. Oh, more like 50 followers. And DM. Yeah. And so why? Um, because I was not in a good mental space. Mm -hmm. um, I would not do that ever again. Okay. Yeah. Because you know I was mad at you for doing that. I was mad at myself for doing that. Okay. You but know? do you know why I was mad? Why? Because I see you as Amber Rose. I, I get that. I, I think that when you are being psychologically and emotionally abused for a long time, you, like you said, the closure, you need some closure or you need some, you know what's going on, but you need like the evidence to, to say like, okay, I, I know this for sure. Um, but I, I, will, I will never, ever do anything like that again. But you live and you learn, you know? But when I was looking at you in your house, when mm -hmm. you were telling me this, you know, internally, I, was not, I wasn't able to understand. I wasn't able mm -hmm. to process right. that you were in that place. Well, I think when you're dealing with uh, a narcissist in a relationship, um, that's what happened. You, you feel like you're absolutely crazy. You're doing things that are out of character, um, and, and that's what I was doing, things that were completely out of character. Because I can look back now and be like, why did I give a fuck? Mm -hmm. Why did I care? You know, again, because my, my chemicals in my body were completely out of whack. My hormones were out of whack um, for a lot of different reasons. But also, you know, 
knowing things and also being uh, gaslighted. Like, you didn't see what you just saw. Like, that didn't happen. No, who texted you? I don't know that person. You know, you're just like, yes, the fuck you do. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. And it almost drives you crazy that you're like, no, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit them up. I want to know the fucking truth. Amber Rose, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I really, you know, I love you and know you, but I, I don't feel like intruding. I'll be, let me just put this as a disclaimer. She yeah. didn't want to talk about this today. She didn't want me to get into her... Mm-hmm business but I just decided to anyway why because it's what I do but more importantly because women love you and I love you and when I when you were going through it I didn't understand how someone who is in my opinion like it is this is like you're beautiful you're successful you're a great well, mom but you're... hold on this isn't me hitting them up like bitch you with my fucking man no just could even this be is in the situation and this is me like He's obviously lying to me. Can yeah. you please tell me the truth? Because I, I want him out of my life. I just want to have proof. Because for some reason, him him saying that he's not doing it and you not answering is not enough for me to leave my baby daddy. Right. The father of your child. I need to know. Mm-hmm. You know, And that was my mindset at the time. But again, you live and you learn. I will never do that ever again. Before I call any bitch, you out the fucking door. What was the journey getting to that though? Like, what, what was it? Was it regaining confidence? Was it regaining that that understanding that the women's intuition is the I smartest? I think that it was so many women, Jason, that it got so obnoxious that it was laughable. And I was like, I, you gotta go. Mm-hmm. Like, I need to get the fuck out of here. Like, this is this is funny at this point. Were any of them cute? Or no. Were like, were there a couple no. like No. No, and I'm not even being an asshole. Right. No, it was it there's a problem and I'm just going to keep it at that cuz I love my child and I'm not going to touch on anything more than what I already said online previously cuz it's already there so I can kind of elaborate on that. But I love my son. He loves his dad and his dad can explain when his son gets older and he, and he has questions, it's not up to me to explain to my son um, what I had to endure um, and, and and what happened. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. Mm. Did you delete Cher off your iPod? No, I love Cher. Shout out to Cher. She, she don't know, it's not her fault. She's with somebody she don't, I mean, it's like, I know who he is. She don't know who he is. You gotta think, I mean, but she had, I had a baby with him, so so there's something about him that made me have a baby with him, right. have a baby with him. But uh, you know, when she finds out who he, he really he's very, is, he's <laughs> very charismatic. He gonna light up a room when he open that mouth because he's gonna teeth crack are, jokes and be and very, be happy. Very personable. Yeah. But share the icon, seventy something years old, walking around Malibu with thirty something less years AE. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was always his type. I don't know. I don't think he has a type. Mm. You know, I think it could pretty much be anybody. Here's my thing. I, and again, I'm, um, I'm not that type of mom. I hate y'all. I'm no, not that type. Y'all are so no, messy. No, I'm really no, trying no, to be like. No, no. First of all, my team is me, okay? Yeah, hello. And she's trying to continue this run-on sentence. It's a lot of... <laughs> 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 I love you. You're so good, by the way. Continue. Okay, so thank you. So I was in all seriousness, I will say that I'm very happy that he's with Cher um, because it creates stability for when my son goes over there, that it's not all mayhem and stuff. Slash is going to Cher's house? Oh, yeah. He goes to Cher's house. So you're definitely not the mom that's like, you're not going over there. No, absolutely not. Why would I do that? She, okay, let's, let's be very clear. She, she, you almost said something, but so, hold on. The media training and the nice, beautiful <laughs> white teeth caught that shit. You know, sometimes God will reach down from heaven and say, uh-uh. You can't, you can't <laughs> blame the, the one. Why would I ever be mad at her? Like, I, I wouldn't blame the other woman because, I, listen, I don't want them. Somebody got to tolerate them, okay? So, and it ain't going to be me, right? So I'm very happy that he's over there with her because it is stability for my son. The only thing that I ask is that you are a present father. 
You help me get him through private school. I want him to go to the same school that Sebastian goes to. It's five thousand dollars a month starting in kindergarten. And put that ain't in Sierra Canyon with the other kids, is it? It's it's same same amount. Yeah. Wow. Same amount. Um, and just be a present father. I don't care if you're fucking her or a dog or a dolphin or a fucking rat. I don't care who you're fucking. I'm not that type of baby mama. That's not who I'll ever be. I want him to be happy because a happy parent is is good for our child. So that's all I care about. All I could think about is a barbecue to bring the kids together, and it'd be Wiz Khalifa, Amber Rose, Cher, and a, that needs to be like some kind of reality mo show I, and, moment. And, and guess what? I'm that person. Like <laughs> Alex used to get, get mad. I'm that person. Like if I had a boyfriend that had kids, yeah, it would be me, my boyfriend, his kids, my kids, Wiz his girlfriend, A.E., his girlfriend, her kids, and we all take a family portrait. It's like, I'm much. that girl. It's too much. No, I'm, I'm her. It, it, please don't. It, yeah. It, it's, it's so many genres of music. <laughs> it's so much. You know what I mean? But, I'm, but I will say, I'm sitting across, looking from you, feeling your vibration, seeing you out the black. Little true story. When I went to work with Kanye, he, he, you know, he, he looked me up and down and said, I'm going to send over somebody to your house to help you with your closet, man, because we going to get you. <laughs> All black. I said, I lost all this weight. I'm not wearing all black. <laughs> what is that obsession with all black? He got that from me. I wore all black all the time. This so, is a special day. Ask Joseph. You have never seen me in pink. You'll probably never see me in pink ever again. When Sexy Red said her pussy pink, her booty hole brown, and then we saw the photos, did you say cap or did you just say whatever? Oh, I didn't see the photos. You didn't? Oh. No, I love her though. She's had a baby. It wasn't pink, but hey. Sexy Red. We love her. Yeah, I love, I love Sexy, Sexy Red. Red. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were a talk show host before. You did a talk show mm -hmm. with Dr. Phil. And, yes. And you had that whole moment on VH1. And you, and then we had talked about a podcast that we were going to co-create that we didn't do anything with. But now you have your own podcast and your YouTube show, which I'm waiting to pull up. Yes. On YouTube show. Okay. Before we do that, I want to give you a gift. Okay. So the soft bag, right? That's flat. You see it? The flat one? This one? Yes. The hell, Jason? <laughs> Oh my God, what is this? It's a bib. A bib? <laughs> it's just over. But when I eat? No, because. I thought it's when I get a haircut, like, you know, in the barber chair. No, but if you go to Arby's, it's going to slip and slide all that over. That is so cute, Jason. Thank you so much. Okay, because I told you, I called you when I saw y'all do it that I want to come on the show, remember? Yes, please. Yeah, so, I would love that. What are okay. we going to eat? What do you want to eat? Whatever. I, I, I eat everything. It's but true. you got to, like, introduce me to something in L.A. maybe that I don't know about. Okay. All right. So let me pick the place. Yeah. All right. So the YouTube show, how did how did that come about? Well, that's the YouTube channel, just Amber. Is that just, mm -hmm. like, day in the life now or you can see? Yeah, it's just day in the life. I'm cooking in the kitchen with my kids and their friends. Uh, we're going out to eat. And um, it's just, you know, again, I, like, I've been very reclusive. Uh, for a lot of years and I don't really show like I'll show pictures of my kids but not much and I just feel like I just want to just open up a little bit more and just show people you know a little more personality let me tell you how annoying of a mother Amber is <laughs> she's a really annoying fucking mom because she actually fucking cares not that that's a bad thing <laughs> but like you could be hanging out with Amber and and you know I'm telling you the truth. You could be talking about the fact that where the world is on the brink of another war, but if Bash walks up or Slash walks up and wants something, she's going to stop everything to talk to them and deal with them and nurture them. And it's so sweet, but really annoying. No, China, she's always like, Mother, loosen the leash, girl. Like <laughs> real. fucking relax. But and I'm like, why? Where did that come from? Because you didn't have kidding. that relationship with your mom. Oh, no, mom, no, I love my mom. My mom is very good, but, um, yeah, my mom always, you know, fed me, always made sure I was good. But was she like that? It was a different time. Okay. It was a different time. So it's like I could be out all day, you know, come home when the, when the streetlights come on. I would never let my children do that. Right. Like, I just think about my childhood, and I'm just like, I would never let my mm -hmm. kids do that. But I also, like, when Bash, you know... He's 11 now, and he starts to get a little attitude and stuff. And I'm like, do you know I had to wash my clothes in the tub and hang them up mm -hmm. and hope that they were dry for the next day for school? You know, like, you don't have to do that. We have a housekeeper five days a week. Right. 
You know what I mean? So like I I had to kind of start putting him on punishment now. So he can like, learn a that. lesson. I do not believe Bash has lost the iPad, a phone, or anything yep, else. Yep. Really? iPad, phone, PS5, everything. But his punishment is he he has he cannot watch YouTube on TV. Okay. He cannot watch TikToks on TV. <laughs> he can watch uh, ch- uh, children's movies. That's it. That's it. Or read a book. Okay. You brought up China. You and China were like this. Mm-hmm. And then you were like that. Yes. Was it because the drugs that she was on? Because China, when she was drinking her drugs or whatever it was, she had a lot going on and it was a lot. You all were friends. Were you like her friend to try to be there for her? Like nobody was there for you? Or what was it when you guys were friends? Because well, you guys have reconciled now. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We have. I love China so much and she's doing so great and I'm very proud of her. Um, I think when we initially met, it wasn't like that. And we became very close very fast. We, our lives are very similar. And we had a lot in common. And I think it progressively got worse during our friendship, the alcohol and stuff like that. Um, and I tried and I tried and I tried to, to be there as a friend. And you know, when people are going through addiction issues, it is very difficult. So I had to separate myself. I felt like she, at that time she had a lot of enablers around her that she would choose to hang with over me because they would enable her and let her drink. Um, and uh, once I found out that she was sober, I reached out to her and I said, China, I'm, I've always loved you from afar. I've missed you. And I'm so happy that you're doing good and I'm so proud of you. And then it was like, we never left each other. Yeah, I like when you all, um, you didn't fall out. You separated the relationship. Yeah, we never fell out. Because we talk about on the show how like an expired relationship is not a beef. You right. don't have to have a beef. But I, but even in how you talked to me privately about how the relationship ended, it was never like, fuck that bitch. She's in no, there. no, never. And then when she came here, at, when she first got clean and we were able to see the new China and I was trying every which way to see if this was real and I got it was really at this new path she was on. I was really proud to see that she came through because my mom didn't make it through. You know, some people who go through those storms, that storm just swallow you up and then right. it's over. So I, I was glad to see that you all reconciled. Um, has she been on the show? She, we ate Arby's together. And so now that people have seen the reunited, are you going to collaborate or do any more together? I think so. We just had a conversation yesterday that we're, we're talking about maybe doing more things together. Yeah, because yeah. she's in her bag right now, and you've always been like, hu- mm-hmm. like you're a hustler. So Yeah. Yeah. So you and China are good. Are you yeah. and Jocelyn good? Jocelyn Hernandez? Yeah. No. Because we recently had New York here. Tiffany Pollard was here. You all watched the show. Mm-hmm. You were on um, College Hill with her. Y'all didn't graduate college. You were supposed to go back and get your degree. You got expelled. Yes, okay. me and Jocelyn got expelled. You're in the class. You're doing something. <laughs> New York has already told the story. If you've missed that episode, take a look. And we all thought that Amber was going to go back to the bathroom to go cool off some more or just go for a walk. Because that walk was, she had already done it once. Yeah, so we're thinking she's going to do it again because words were exchanged. So instead of walking to the restroom, she decides to stop behind Miss Hernandez's seat. And all I know is I just saw fists flying at heads, nails and jewelry being popped, Heads against glass. I Heads mean, against glass? That fight could not be shown on television. Heads against glass. Boom, boom. That's why I'm screaming. Because it's like, no, oh my I, gosh, yeah, is somebody going to bust through the fucking glass? You know what I'm saying? Like, this was a real fight. It was a brawl. And I'm going to say both ladies, I'm not going to say, they were throwing down. This was, this was a fight where it's like, am I really paying attention to this? Like, is, is this really happening? Is this a part of the show? Like, it was really one of those intense. And Ray J, he, he just keep telling me to shut up because I'm making it worse. He's like, would you shut up? Because we kept hearing your voice. Yeah, because I couldn't believe what I was saying, you know? Because sometimes you look at these girls and you don't think they, you know. Well, because all of you are brands. Yeah. Like you're, you know, like, we see some of these shows where the girls and the guys who are fighting, they're new in the game and they're getting their thing. And it's, but, but you're New York. You're yeah. Amber Rose. Yeah. You're Ray J. Yeah. In class at college. <laughs> and when I heard that nobody saw that fight, I couldn't believe they didn't air it. Because oh, I've tried. I've dug. I've, oh I've gone my to. Gosh. I've gone everywhere, and they said this will. We have destroyed that clip. It was some foot. 
package. Okay, so I showed you what New York said while she, before we came out here. You saw it. Did she describe it pretty much accurately? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, yeah. So, obviously, you know, with um, reality TV, there's a lot of editing mm -hmm. that happens. And so we were all getting bullied for three weeks by Jocelyn. The whole class. Everybody was getting bullied by Jocelyn. They didn't show when Omarion's um, brother, uh, Orion. Orion, was arguing with her, got in a whole argument with her. Ray J got in a whole argument with her. Um, it was it was really tumultuous. I mean, it was it was pretty bad. It was a very hostile environment, and they couldn't convey that on the show because I guess it wasn't enough time. But by the time I got in the classroom and just hearing, uh, I was like, take a breather, Amber. Go outside, smoke a little cig, chill out for a second, come back, finish your work because you're trying to graduate. Okay, wait. First fact that New York told us. She said you went outside and took a little break. Yeah. You did that on your own. I did that on my own. Because you felt it was the, it was percolating. Yes. Okay. It was bubbling. Because this was, this was, again, day after day after day after day, waking up to her yelling and just being obnoxious in the house. We're all grown. This is, it was crazy. And College Hill isn't even that show. It's not that show. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah. It's not even that show. So, um... Uh, so, uh, you walk outside to get the cigarette. So, I walk outside, I smoke a cigarette, I come back in, I'm cool. She starts with me again. They even edited the, the, her starting with me again. Um, so th this is what happened. We read a poem from Langston Hughes about different hues of black women, right? Beautiful poem. And, uh, Jocelyn screams out in the classroom, uh, yeah, not like them dirty, ugly white people. Uh, not, not like them white girls, they're fucking ugly as hell, right? Again, I don't identify as a white woman. I don't give a fuck what this weirdo is screaming out in the classroom. She's obnoxious. And, but the, but the people in the classroom kind of turned to me like, because I'm the only biracial yeah. there. So they turned to me and I'm like, I don't give a fuck what this bitch is saying. And then she turns around and she's like, Oh, but you know, Amber, but you're black, right? So I'm like, again, yes, but I'm all, I'm biracial. So I do have a white parent as well. So we get in that argument because she acts like she's stupid. Like she doesn't know that you can be two things at one time. Mm -hmm. um, and so anyway, that happens. And then she's like, you know what your fucking problem is? You just want to be white. And you know, for a biracial, you call somebody white, is that you got to throw hands after well, that. Well, because we've been hearing it our whole life. It's just annoying. And we know it's impossible. Right. Because we know who we are. Right. And now we know you're refusing to accept who we are. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing it in front of the camera. Yeah. And now here we are. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, you're going to catch it for every bitch that tried me my whole life. Period. <laughs> I get it. And then I had to hit her with an eight piece. And an eight piece? I hit her, <laughs> you hit her with an eight piece? I hit her with an eight piece. I hit her with an eight piece. And uh, what happened was, is that, and here's the gag, because I, I saw this on live, like, oh, Amber snuck her because she was sitting down. It's like, no, girl, you underestimated me and you didn't get your ass up out the chair because you thought I was going to walk past you and go outside. She thought you were going to be Amber Rose with Kanye walking around with glasses on and nothing to say. You know, as you should have stood your ass up, but you didn't. And so when I hit you with the eight piece, she she had to go like this. So what happened was I'm fighting, and she, uh, for some way when I'm fighting, I had a, I was just like Eminem that day because mm -hmm. it was Halloween. Mm -hmm. My big ass shirt kind of went over my head. So when she she's like this, she got up like this and pushed me, and I fell back and I hit my head on a window. That's what New York said happened. So it was your head. It was my head. Okay. So when she pushed me off of her, because I was like, I was, I was going ham on her. She had to push me off of her. And I fell back. I couldn't see. My, my, my jacket was over my face. She pushed me back. I came back. Wah, 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 wah. And then Iman, Iman reenacts the whole thing. He's hilarious. Uh, but that's the only thing she did do. She, she pushed me and my head hit the thing. But then, And when you're throwing the hands, they're all connecting? They're all connecting. She was lumped the fuck up. Her whole face was lumped up. 
Not the Puerto Rican princess. Yeah, but I think, you know, uh, and to be fair, no, I didn't want to have no, to do stop that. Stop being fair. I didn't want to have to do that, Jason. I'm just saying for me, you I did, did not want to have to you do that. You did what our ancestors been waiting to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't sure. talking about the black ones. It's all of them. Just yeah. the black and the white ones. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> because, see, y'all thought Amber did that for, B see, I know her, right? And I'm not even talking about us talking because we've never even talked about this. Mm -hmm. Amber was on Clubhouse in the room and drugged me into the room with all the mixed people that turned that support group into talking about our issues because right. people don't talk about the mixed person's lived experience. Right. We wake up with black pride, but we also have Italian or white family members who we wake up and have pride that, that we love. That yeah. we love too. Mm -hmm. And so we see the world in a way that we understand both sides. We identify with the side that's been through the struggle, but we also understand the side who has to, you know, understand they were a part of that. But we, the duality is a beautiful thing because we bring it all together. Right. But we're constantly in the fight with both. Yes. Yep. Because when you brought me in that support group, I ain't gonna lie to her on the side. Man, stop inviting me to this weird shit. Because I understood it and I found myself having to go back because the conversation was something that we don't really get to talk about. True. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, Do you think look, it was the cocaine that she was doing though? Maybe. Because it was, she was very erratic. She was very erratic. Because I even tried to like reason with her uh, before the, the classroom thing. I tried to reason with her and I'm just like, girl, like, Kind of like off cat, like we're on College Hill, girl. Like we're all grown. Like we don't, it's we don't have the, to do this. It's not the baddies. Like it's okay. Like yeah. you know, we can all be cool. Like this, we're just going to college, and like, and she was just out of her mind. And I, you know, I can't, especially with everything I just told you that I was going through at that time, uh, mentally. Bitch, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. no, girl, no, no, no. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, because it was coming right out of all of that. So there was some pent there was some pent up hostility just in the bucket waiting. It wasn't waiting for her, but it was just waiting. It was waiting, but it was like I wish a motherfucker would. Yeah. And she did. Yeah. So Yeah. Woo, caught the right one on the wrong day. No, but you know, the reason why I bring up uh, cocaine, and I'm not even saying alleged, she shared very publicly her uh her bouts with cocaine and you know, her struggles, whatever. And we've all seen we've had friends, we family members that Yeah, and I wish her well on her journey, yeah. you know, for uh, for I've always, I think Jocelyn's a beautiful girl, you know, but yeah, I think maybe the alcohol and the cocaine, it just, something's, something's not right up there. There's no reason to act like that. When you saw the fight at the Floyd Mayweather thing and she went through all that, fighting the police, beating up the girls, swinging on everybody, punching everybody, mm -hmm. then you have PTSD and say, been there, saw that. I mean, no. she was swinging on you like that, but. No, <laughs> no. I was like, now y'all see what, what the fuck I had to deal with. That was crazy. Yeah. No, no adult should be acting like that. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's not. And that's why I said, like, I, I didn't want to have to hit her and shit. But, like, the South Philly just came out of me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I literally could not help myself. Weren't you mad that BET didn't let it air, though? It should have just, they should have just, I ain't going to lie, Amber. I love you, but I, I tried to were. dig that thing up. I called everybody. I was offering people situations. To figure, it, they BET did a great job of containing that. Yeah, yeah. I guess they got rid of it. I don't know. Uh, well, I will tell you, up to three days before it was supposed to come out, it was coming out. Three days before. I told Tracy Edmond, I'm like, when is it supposed to come out? And she was like, it's coming out in three days. And then I watched it and it wasn't there. And I called Tracy. So I don't know. I don't know why they, they scrapped it last minute. I have no idea. But... I'm not mad at it, you know. It is what it is. So has she reached out to you or where are you all with that Who? situation? Jocelyn. No, she's not going to reach out to me, mm -hmm. you know. And I think it, 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 for me, there's no beef. Mm -hmm. Shit happened. It happened. We fought each other. Did you fight um, each other? When you, if, if you I mean, she, she did knock my head against the glass, but like, to, to get me off of her. Right. But I still came back swinging. And then swinging. you turn it into the eight mile and then ding, 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 four piece and we're out of here. Yeah. 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 Well, we Watch wish Watch out you for the quiet ones, you know? Mm -hmm. We'd be having some built up, uh, built up shit with us. What I would that? say it was the grace of God, but you don't believe in God. I do not believe in God, no. I didn't know you didn't believe in God until the day you and I were in my sprinter. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> and we're leaving a party and Amber's sitting in front of me and I'm sitting here and I'm on my phone and her and my... Her and somebody that I used to know are talking and uh, they're talking about God and 
it evolved into you're not. Well, he a, was an atheist too. No, your friend, no. no, he is a God fearing, Bible thumping. Okay. You know. I don't know if I remember. Okay. Yeah, but you're not. No, I'm a full. I'm an atheist for sure. Not a Satanist. I'm not a Satanist. No. And there is a distinction. Satanists are just uh, they're atheists as well, but they're just more political. Okay. They 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 have like a polit. It's actually a, a very rational, logical religion. They they help a lot of people, a lot, um, to a lot of women to get abortions, um, in southern states that you know where they're illegal. They help a lot of the gay community, the LGBTQ plus community. Um, they're really great with that. They just use Satanists to kind of just troll, but they don't believe in Satan at all. Okay, so when I hear somebody say atheist, I hear anti God. Is that true? No, it's just the the non belief. Okay. So people would say, okay, you're an atheist. Why do you hate God? I don't believe in God, so I, I can't hate something I don't believe in. So you don't believe a God exists? No. And you don't believe a God has ever existed? No. And you don't believe that there's a Jesus or a manger somewhere in Bethlehem? Sure. Jesus could have been a, a man that lived on earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care to argue that. It doesn't make him God. What, have, you always believe, have you always been an atheist? No, I was a Christian my whole life. And then when did you convert to being an atheist? Uh, I'll say a couple years ago. Just a couple years ago? Yeah, it was about a couple years ago. Um, I read, I well, so I was on a spiritual journey. Started looking into Buddhism, Islam, um, different denominations of Christianity, kind of trying to see where I fit in. I went to a Buddhist temple. It just didn't, it just nothing felt like right and then I remember just being at church my whole life and I was just like people would be like you know I I, I felt the spirit and I never felt no spirit never no I would like always put my hands in the air like I would kind of emulate people around me at church and um no and I couldn't even fake it I was just like why is everyone feeling things I, I'm not feeling them mm -hmm. you know I can't even act like I'm feeling them and uh, yeah, I just did my research and then uh, I, I realized that I was an atheist. I, I just believe in science. I believe in evolution. I, I don't believe that God, you know, gave us Jesus as his son from a virgin mother. And I definitely don't believe in the Bible. I think it's like cool stories, but I don't, I don't. I don't believe in, in most of the stories in the Bible. What was the journey that you, that took you on, or what was the thing that took you on the journey to, like, denouncing Christianity and, like, finding no way to believe in God? Um, I think that I just felt like... My, and my mom is very deep in the church. My mom goes to church seven days a week. Still and at right night. Now. Yeah, and at night and during the day and in the middle of the night. That bitch <laughs> is at church, like, constantly. Um... But a lot of Christians that I have met throughout my life, I found to be very delusional and um, liars. And so that's what initially started me into looking into atheism. Not to say that every Christian is like that, because I don't believe anything is a monolith. But um, yeah, I just I realized that I was an atheist. And I think it, there's no evidence that a God exists. It's just... People believe it, and then it becomes true for them. But there's no evidence that a God exists at all. See, when I think of atheists or people who, who don't believe in God, I think of people who just always believe that. But if you believed in God, did you ever believe deeply in faith? Like, did you ever have a real deep sense I mean, of... I, I prayed, for sure. Okay. I definitely prayed. But that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, like, indoctrinated into Christianity because mm -hmm. I was just raised in, into Christianity. But I... I don't. I don't believe that there's any evidence for a god at all. Mm. Well, there's there's not actually. So is there? Do, so when the Bible talks about blasphemy and blasphemy being the one unfor, unforgivable sin from God, you don't even believe in that because you don't believe there's God. So there can't be that one sin that is going to condemn you to hell. Do you believe in hell? No. So when you die, I don't believe in the devil. I don't believe the devil exists. I don't believe in any. Uh, I, I I believe that they're fictional characters and. This is probably going to make people really mad, but I believe that Jesus was a cult leader. And I believe that it it actually worked. And they spread his word all around the world. Jesus is a cult leader? Have you said that publicly before? Maybe. Probably just, on my podcast. Because I just felt the internet shake. 
Maybe that was God. Huh? Wait, Jesus, is that you? Jesus is a cult leader? Yeah. I think it's more likely that he was a cult leader, yeah. I mean, just think about it, Jason, you know? Live, live, you know, by my word, do as I say, I'm a selfish God, I'm, you know, um, spread the word around the world about who I am. And then the people around him were just like, you're crazy, we're gonna kill you. Cause you're like indoctrinating all these people into your belief system. Like cults don't have to always be, uh, you know, I mean, he had some some good lessons along the way, but <laughs> not he had some good lessons along the way. <laughs> I'm just saying the church community is somewhere throwing Bibles at the script, but they don't have to because that's my belief, right? I'm yeah. not throwing anything at them for their beliefs. You're not throwing anything at Muslims for their beliefs. We all believe in different things. That's why I love America. So we live in a free country to have these conversations. I'm an all American girl, and you know I. I believe that we should all believe in what we want. Yeah. Yeah, I knew eventually we would have the show. I literally shut down in the car and refused to entertain it. And I think I, you know, me being openly gay, you know, and I'm... I've, I've, yeah, know, God hates you. How are you I'm, gay? See, but I don't believe that. And I've never read in a Bible that it said that. I think people take this book and have read and made many iterations in their mind of what it... Because the you can't serve a God who's about love and peace and, you know... Helping those that Didn't are. Didn't God kill like everyone on earth except for Noah? I mean, there's a lot of people in this world dying right now that probably should die. I don't think that death. I'm with you. Eye for an eye. <laughs> I mean, can we I'm get back you. to that? But that's in the Bible. Sure. But that's not, but, but Christianity's, the, uh, Christians don't, they don't live by that anymore you even went to the vatican that's why the pope was telling you get out of here that's why yeah he was like, like bye gone, gone. bye bitch <laughs> <laughs> okay so you're standing on that now is there a church of atheism or is it even no atheism? no it's it's non-theistic uh -huh. so that you don't believe in anything but do y'all get together for potlucks like what how no. do you, you don't congregate no so you just bump into somebody in the produce section and be like you ate this i mean like i don't know how do y'all even con meet each other because you said oh, you're only like gonna you said you're not gonna be with somebody unless they're an atheist You've said that, I think, right? I, I, okay, first of all, that was definitely me trolling. I said some obnoxious things in that story post. I post obnoxious things on my story all the time, so uh -huh. do not take it seriously. Um, would I prefer an atheist? Yes. Um, I would definitely date someone that believed in God, but it's like just you believe don't in God. Don't talk about it. And I don't. You pray, and I don't. Don't try to convert me, because that's what you religious people do. I'm okay with being an atheist, and you live your best life, and we can coexist and be happy. But to not let somebody pour the good word into you, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna convert you, because that's like saying you with the homie playing the video game, and yeah, okay, he may want some hit. You ain't, you ain't gotta give it to him, and he ain't gotta want it. We all know what happens, but I'm just saying like. But that's like me, okay, so let's put that in reverse, right? Let's put yeah. that in reverse. I'm an atheist, so as an atheist, I don't try to convert anyone into atheism. I just mind my fucking business. Mm -hmm. So if I sit with you all day and I'm like, I'm telling you, God don't exist. You need to come over to this side. You're, you know, you're, you're wasting your time with the Bible. I, I'm not doing that. I'm just letting you love God, mm. and I'm still your friend. So then, if you don't believe in God, are you anti Chick Fil A? Because you know, they, you know, they got them religious beliefs that don't give us the food on Sunday. And you oh, know, no, I love Chick-fil-A. No, but Clothes on Sunday. You know, your, your ex-man had a song, Clothes on Sunday. He's talking about Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday because they're God-fearing, Bible-thumping people that believe in no gays and this and that. But they're going to serve you well, up Well, they hire sauce. gay people. They employ gay people. That's all <laughs> bullshit. I mean, gay people are making money from Chick-fil-A, so I okay. don't believe in anything so, like that. So you would date somebody that believes in God. Christmas, so when Bash and Slash, do they get toys on Christmas? Yeah. But it's not Jesus' birthday. Um, well, Sebastian loves God. Okay, and so, so you won't argue with him or debate him on his God. Just like I told you, atheists, we don't do that. We don't try to convert people. Religious people try to convert us. So if my son loves God, I matter of fact, I have my children's Bible from 1992. Mm -hmm. I kept all of my books, I was an avid book reader. I kept all of my books and I just gave it to Sebastian because he said he wants to learn more about Jesus and the Bible and the stories. And so I gave him my children's Bible from 1992 and he, he loves it. He prays to God every night and I allow him to have 
that freedom. I'm not going to, you know, when he gets older, he can ask me uh, why I'm an atheist. But until then, he, he can love God. That's okay. If he says, Mom, come with me to church, you're not going? I don't know. You'll do anything for Bash. You're going to church. Ba- Bash? I don't know if he would ask me that. Like, he's, he's, he knows that I don't believe in God. He'll be he like, knows. Mama, I, yeah. I know you don't believe in God, but I do. And I said, that's okay, baby. As long as you can believe in God, that's okay. You don't have to um, you know, be an atheist like me. Are you and Wack 100 friends yet? No. And won't be friends? I don't need to, I don't need him as a friend. There's no beef, though. Yeah. yeah I don't... Clubhouse, is Clubhouse still a thing? Because I think when we were on Clubhouse, it was cool. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, it's the highway for just internet trolling the beef. And totally. we all had that moment. Is, is it back to that or is you, are you off it? Oh, I don't know what's going on on Clubhouse. Okay. I have no idea. Uh, YK Osiris is coming on this. You um, sounded off about the whole Suki, YK Osiris thing and supporting mm-hmm. her. Did you, do you think he's unfairly accused of, I mean, like, was that really sexual assault what he did? I think, I think that uh, I was very triggered when I saw that, and I think it was unfair for me to speak on it because he's a young boy, and that could have been more of a learning experience, so I will take accountability for that. Um, I probably could have hit him in a DM and been like, you probably shouldn't do this, go about it this way, and, you know, more of like a motherly figure. But yeah, I was very, I was very triggered by that. But I, I don't think I should, I should have said anything publicly. But it is almost, to your, to fairness to you, it's almost every day now you go online and some woman is getting attacked, right. getting attacked, or will be attacked by somebody. Right. Cassie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you make of this whole Diddy Cassie? Now some man said Diddy was playing with his butt. Wow. Is it just out of control? Yeah, I, I, I support Cassie and I stand with Cassie. Um, I don't know these other people, so I can't really talk on that. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised to see just the down, I'm gonna say the downfall of Diddy, because I I love Diddy and I respect him. And when we launched the show, we were part of the Revolt family, but to watch it just all go down. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's just the effects of cancel culture? Or do you think that's just people are fed up and now finally feel like they have a voice or a combination of both? Well, I think, and I I won't personalize it to Diddy, but I think that when you deal with powerful men, when one person kind of opens the floodgates, it's like, okay, now I can tell my story. I've been holding this story and now I want to say what happened, you know, with me. And so, you know, um, I think that's what was happening. But again, I... I'm not too familiar with the other stories that are coming out, uh, so I'm not. I'm not too sure. Mm. Okay, and you're single now. I'm very single. Yes. Is Slash single? No. no. The the rocker guy. No. Because you love Slash, but, but not like in that way. Sisterly thing. Yeah, yeah, not in that way. Okay. He's more like my hero. Would you date a white man? Yes. But I would date an Asian too. I don't discriminate. Would you date a rapper again? No. You're done. Yeah, there's no rappers left. <laughs> <laughs> no? Just kidding. Um, Did you see Drake's dingling on the internet? Yes, Jason. Everyone saw his dingling. I know. I just wanted to ask. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So um, you're done with the rappers. Uh, yes. I, can ima- I can't imagine me dating a I mean, you dated rapper. like the mecca of a rapper. You've dated the upcoming rapper. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you, the rap era, soccer player. I see you with a soccer player. Oh, I've been, I've been down that road. Really? Yeah. Wait, did I miss, I missed no, that? No, it was nothing public, but they're, 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 I, and I've never done anything sexual with a soccer player on my children's lives, but they're definitely tricks. Like, they'll just, like, They'll buy you all kinds of jewelry, you know, shopping sprees. Trips. Just to, yeah, just to be next to you. That's cool, but I don't know. I'm over that. What about Dubai? You've done Dubai. I mean, yeah, the like, Middle Eastern men are super hot. Hot. Yeah, they're gorgeous. You could be the princess of the UAE. <laughs> I see it. For real. I'm Not ball headed with shades on. They'll be like, girl, you don't cover that shit up. <laughs> no, no, not in Dubai, not no more like that. Yeah, no, no, Dubai's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, oil tycoon. Oh, I ain't even gonna hit you with that. What about oil? Would you would you date an oil tycoon? I would. Because date... we're not dating broke anymore. 
We are not dating broke anymore. Okay. Um, but we only dated broke because I've, I've dated all the rich ones, and I'm like, they ain't shit. Maybe a broke one might be better. He said, but uh, they're all the same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You are going to have me in so much shit, Jason. Why? You no. are just so fucking Nobody messy. Nobody watches this low old show. Come on. Oh, please. <laughs> um, yeah, but I don't, I do not discriminate. I just want to be around someone that's normal. That, uh, one thing I will say, if you do not have children, don't hit me up. Really? Yeah, I don't want to date someone that doesn't have children. Because you have to understand what being a parent is. Period. And I'm not having no more kids. So there's no reason for us to get close or possibly fall in love and be together because I'm not having a baby for you. So it's a waste of my fucking time. Like, you need to already have your kids. (laughs) You don't want baby Amber? No, I'm done. Baby Amber, you have to have a daughter. I'm done. I would have to be a surrogate. I have the worst pregnancies ever. I'm not going through that ever again. And I'm very happy with my two boys. Did you have postpartum? Probably. Because I'm learning as I'm talking to women who've had kids, like postpartum isn't like that emotional thing that happens for a week or two. Sometimes mm-hmm. it does. Sometimes it lasts a year or two. Like mm-hmm. it's all over the place. And I, I think people just don't really understand. Well, I found out I was getting cheated on my entire pregnancy. Like when my baby was like one week old. So like that wasn't... Um, so I don't know if it was postpartum or I was just devastated or I was just like, the fuck did I get myself into? Wait, you were getting cheated on during the pregnancy? Oh, my whole pregnancy. Oh, my God. Disgusting. I had no idea. I had no idea. Were you still having sex while you were pregnant? Oh, yeah. Yep. Did he at least wear protection with these people? Uh, I would assume so because I'm okay. Yeah. But that's risky. It's very risky, yeah. Which is why mentally I was not okay. I was not okay for a long time. So I'm glad you're back, shit. I am back. I'm back in full effect. Because I almost went to work out with y'all. Remember that one time y'all were trying to take me to some workout thing? I mean, you were right. You remember? We going to work out after this. You should go. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to lunch. Are you going to lunch? Would you date a woman again? No. You're done. I only want to date men. Would you let a man, would you have an open relationship? No. You want a white picket fence with the man, the two kids, his kids, your dog. Um, if I were to be in a relationship, then I would I would want that, yes. Well, in a blended family. But you said you would you you would you would be okay with being single for the rest of your life. Yes. But single doesn't equate to being lonely. Not at all. Okay. So you think I'm you- not lonely now at all. I'm I'm very fulfilled. I get to wake up, I have my own schedule. I do what I want with my kids. I go to sleep when I want. I eat what I want. I, it's, I mean, it's pretty fucking amazing being single. You know, I think I've been in relationships my whole life, Jason. Yeah. Every time a guy meets me, he like just falls in love with me and just like ties me down, like. But at forty, you feel that way. I'm forty six now, <laughs> so I go from like I love my space. I love being alone, I have the extra room, so like we can't sleep together on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can be over there, Friday yeah. you can go to my, you know what I mean? Yeah. But there are days where I'm like, I want to be in love. Do you think that, that could be change? Be in love for a night, that's fine. Yeah, but that gets lonely and as you get older, who gonna help feed me my soup when I'm like, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe that's where you're at. I'm very <laughs> comfortable with like feeding myself soup. Just sip it out of straw. I, I'm, I'm okay. Right. Yeah, I don't want nobody's dusty ass fucking son bothering me. I don't want nobody bothering me. If you're not adding value to my life, leave me the fuck alone. That's it. So you're okay with emotionless, momentary sex? Because we have needs. I'm not a very Mm. sexual person. I've never been a very sexual person. Mm. Like I can go a long time without sex. If I don't have feelings for you, I'm not gonna fuck you. That's why I get very frustrated when it's like, I do have a lot of male friends and I go on the internet, she fucked this guy, she fucked, uh, it was like fabulous and Amari Stoudemire and Chris Brown and uh, I mean the fucking Jonas. I just asked you if you was with CJ Stroud the other day. No, I just got a ride back to my hotel because he was on my team for the charity softball game. Yeah. I'm 18 years older than that boy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, so I do get very frustrated with that because then People believe it, and then other guys are like, damn, she's fucking a lot. Jesus Christ. Like she's she's going, she done, 
She was fucking Chris Rock, and now she's fucking CJ, and then she's fucking. Don't you know. go to the NBA All Star game and just sit. Oh, in it's courtside. over for me. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so over for me. I'm fucking everybody on the team. The, so it would be the new three on three for real. They did that with Kevin Durant. Also, never slept with Kevin Durant. I did a charity softball game. Amber's turning around, showing her ass. It's just not who I am. Mm -hmm. It's not who I am. And I have children, so if. You will know if I'm dating someone, trust me. Oh, I know. Yeah, trust me. Okay, but this is where people like me hate people like you. Somebody who, because God, I always say, God knows what he did and not giving me a vagina, because I'd have worn that thing out a long time ago. <laughs> when you know you can pretty much get any man you want. Yeah, it it's becomes boring. Really? Yes. Is it because you have to deal with what comes with the man? I can go fuck whoever I want right now if I wanted to. Right, and like. Where's the challenge in that? It's not fun. I mean, Jason Tatum. Uh, from the Celtics? Yes, he's hot. But he's with... Uh, I mean, allegedly. What's her name? Um, Ella May. Ella May. Okay, I know. God bless you, Ella. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I love You it. love a light skit boy. No, 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 no. Hey, I've been... Look, you know... You've uh, been dipping and dabbing. I'm and... getting to Cape Town soon. I'm, I'm going to move around okay, a little bit. Okay, all right. You know? I ain't mad at you. All right, um... So let's talk about the podcast. Yes. When, why did you decide that style of talk? Because you're talking to very eclectic groups of people. I'm very eclectic. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like turning 40, I needed to just do me, right? So I don't want my podcast to be celebrity driven like my talk show. No offense. Oh, no. I, um, because that shit gets, I mean. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just, it's too... Uh, it's not my personality. I'm not interested. I'm interested in interesting things. That's why I had Lucian Greaves, the head of the Satanic Temple, on there. I had Neil deGrasse Tyson on there. I had a mortician on there to ask about, you know, funerals and embalming and cremation and things of that nature. Um, I just had a girl, Amanda Ray, on there. She was a part of a cult in Utah. And so these are things that I'm interested in. I watch a lot of documentaries. Um, about the solar system and the universe and the planets and science and religions and so those are those are the guests that I'm going to have on my podcast. So I hope they're not listening. Why did you come up with that name? Because a lot of things are controversial. You know, I hope they're not listening. It's kind of like <laughs> you're going to hear some shit that you that you you know might scare you or be like, fuck, maybe I didn't want to know that. When you interviewed the mortician, did you believe everything she was talking about? Yeah. Did this you, was the lady that was talking about bodies don't jump or they don't move. She was saying that she, yeah, that they, so from the morgue, maybe in the morgue, but once they get to the funeral home. Oh, okay. Those nerves have died down already. Yeah. Okay. Because we've heard stories at the morgue, they move around. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Would you um, ever do reality TV again? Again? Well, college well, Oh, you got a thing, Jason. 14 years of being famous, I did one season in College Hill, and look what happens. Right, right, but would you do would you do one different, like a something to follow your life or maybe. Do traders. Have you seen that show? No. What? what traders is, is the new show where there's like three people who are traders and they're in a house full of other people. Larsa Pippen's on it, and you have to know who the trader is, so they're kind of killing people off. It's a real mind. You would like it because you're like that weird mind. Thing, yeah, mm -hmm. you would like it, and it's okay. It's yeah, like I gotta look into that. I never, I, I haven't seen that. Okay, I have another gift. Yeah, just take that one, Jason. If this is anything messy, no. I'm gonna fucking oh, kick your ass. Why would I do anything messy? Aww, <laughs> that is a very, very thoughtful. I have to give Marina the props because she finds all the great gifts. This is very, very thoughtful. Yeah, so. Cruel Intentions is one of my favorite movies, and uh, I watched it during my pregnancy. And his name is Sebastian uh, in the movie. And then I, you know, I asked Wiz, I was like, "What about Sebastian as a name?" And he was like, "That's it." And then it just stuck. And then he got Bash tatted on his head, and then so did I. Have you met Ryan Phillippe? Uh, several times. Okay. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he's cool. And he has a good relationship with his son. We uh, went. Up, we yeah, he's super cool. Yeah. yeah, I've been at so many parties with him. Okay, there's another gift. We'll just go ahead and keep the gifts rolling. You're welcome. <laughs> <gasps> Listen, she does all the research. Marina finds all the gifts that make our guests go. Wow. I am shooketh. 
Jason, my heart is beating so fast. Yeah? That, I'm a cologne. Like, right now I have on Gucci. But I'm a cologne, like, person. Where'd you get this from? eBay? I've been wearing this perfume since the seventh grade. Yeah. Okay? You, they discontinued it. You cannot find it. And it's only on eBay. And, and on eBay, it's maybe like $400. Something ridiculous. This I'll, is, get, I'll get the reimbursement request. I don't know. <laughs> but like, oh my God, I have to smell it. Yeah, I need to smell it because it, it was a thing. I, I think it's the first time we bought This smells for like South Philly. Let me smell. Oh, my mic. Oh, it smells really good. Okay, well, sp wow. spray wisely. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Okay. I'm, I'm so shocked. Okay, well, listen. Very thoughtful. Uh, Thank you. Listen, we had a lot of things. We got into some things, but now we got to get into some games. Okay. All right, so we had to get through all of that, but now we got to get to the games. And the game that we're going to play today is a game that everybody loves. It's called Smash or Pass. Really simple, we're gonna just uh, grab the paddle on the side of your chair right there. There should be a paddle down there somewhere. And on one side it says smash, and on the other side it says pass. I'm gonna get in so much trouble for this. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You're single. I am single, but like, okay. And you're a woman of no God. All right. <laughs> so God won't be mad at me. If God you're, ain't okay. gonna be mad at you, know what I'm saying? You can say anything you want. Fine. All right, this is a friend of the show. It's like a little brother. First person up. In L.A. Chapa. Too young. So he's in the C.J. Stroud. Yeah, too young for me. What is too Handsome young? Handsome gentleman, too young. The rule is anything under thirty is too, too, way too young for me. Yes. Yeah, so the rule is this: is the rule, the, the, the rule. I didn't make up the rule. It's your age divided by two plus seven. That would be twenty-seven in your. No, Jason, that's not the rule. That is the rule, I swear no, to God. <laughs> yes, it is. That's the rule I saw online. Somebody said, yo. I got two sons. I don't want a third one. Pass. Sorry, Choppa. All right, <laughs> next one. Recently single, Jeezy. He's a rapper, though, but Jeezy's like a grown man rapper, like a snowman. Jeezy is like my brother. My first two music videos I've ever done were with Jeezy. Very professional, gentleman, but I'm going to have to pass. On, on Jeezy? Yeah. Why? You you don't like your dark meat on the side too? Uh no, it's just um I just feel like he has more of like a brother vibe yeah. to me. Yeah. He has like a real man vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Handsome guy for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. The, uh, what about the, you? With the dark meat on you think I'm about to say something about the snowman? I'm not catching. No, I go to the A. I don't want no problem. What up, bro? <laughs> Wait, you know you what? You just passed on an L.E. Chopper. I'm passing on everybody. I just play along with you. Okay, I don't, fine. Listen, All right, unless fine. Unless Blueface pops up or, you know You think I mean? Blueface is hot? Yeah, of course. You don't? Blueface is gorgeous. Right. He should be a model on the runways of Paris. I agree. What is, what is he doing? He's in jail right now. He needs to get out of jail and go to Paris and be on I, fucking be a model. I agree. But and I'm saying this as... Genuinely. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Not on no weirdo shit. Like, I agree. You both have face tattoos. Now that one, without all the messy social media drama, I think y'all would be a hot little situation. No. Ever. No. But you would help him with his modeling career. Give oh, yeah, for shit. sure. As a motherly figure. Yeah. Yes. Not motherly. He's yes. a, that's a grown ass man. That's fine. Free I'm old blue, enough to be his mother. Free blue face. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, free blue face. I don't know. The man's in jail. Okay. Yeah, Wait. but he's he uh, he should be a model. It's crazy. You got slash and bass. These are your children forever on your head. Krishan Rock got the blue face tattoo <laughs> on the face. Would you ever put a man's face on your face? No, my face. I had Wiz's face on my arm. You had. Yeah, I got. I put Slash's face on top of it. Okay. But not never on the face. No. Yeah, you don't put a bumper sticker on a Bentley. She's young. She'll learn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next person. He's hilarious, by the way. Cameron. Smashing Cameron? Yeah. Really? Yeah, he's fucking hot. He's always been hot. He's always been hot. Cameron has always been hot. Do you guys know each other? Yeah, we know each other. I mean, this is a game. It's a game. It's oh, a yeah. Game. Oh, I'm sorry. I have notes. I need to read. I don't read. 
He said that you were number one in his top three. Oh, when did he say that? I don't know, somewhere. He just said it recently. He said, you got that blonde Caesar and the fatty. <laughs> How you doing, Cameron? Okay, if I see y'all pop up together. <laughs> no, nah, don't do that. Okay, you said you wouldn't date women, but we'll just throw one in there because you got pink on today. Margot Robbie. Smashing with a fucking strap on and every, whatever she wants. Whatever she wants, she can have it. Because she, she, she's living in a Barbie world. I am a, I'm gay for her, for sure. Really? Yeah, she's, I mean, wow. True story, went to a party, standing right behind her, didn't know who she was. But everybody around me was looking at me crazy because I didn't know who she was. I mean, look at her. She literally looks like a Barbie. She's gorgeous. I will say uh, it was good to not know who she was because I was able to look at her when I found She was so nice, like very nice to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's pretty. Okay. Stunning. Okay, so you'd be gay for that. I would be gay for her, for sure. Okay, Margo, hit the hotline. All right, um, okay, he's recently single. You guys are friends. We're friends? Oh. <laughs> Stop playing. Huh? No, Ray J. No. That's <laughs> oh, my brother. Yeah. That's my brother. For Ray sure. J, we love you, Ray J, but he is a, Ray J is a hot mess. He is one of the funniest people I ever met in my fucking he's, life. He's a comedian. I would pay him to just live in a house with me for a month again, like we did at College Hill. That's how. So was he fun all day long? He is fun all day long. Yeah. Like I know that princess and the kids and like everyone around him just has so much fun with him. Yeah. Yeah. Nonstop. But that's my brother, so I'm a pass. He's a mess. You're a mess. You know this. Love him to death, though. All right. How about this guy? Just nasty. Pass. He's too nasty for me. No, wait. You have to say Smash because he watches this show. No, no. Great guy. Great guy. Great guy. But pass on. Family is beautiful. I was just uh, actually around him and his family. We did um, the Rams game. Uh -huh. They were there. Uh, he's too nasty for me. I'm scared of that. I don't it's like scary, that. Scary nasty. Yeah, it's too scary for me. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm a very traditional girl. But Kevin Gates gives you that, like that is gonna be like when you know you're going in the bedroom and you know that door closes, it's gonna be so much that you're gonna be exhausted for a couple of days. Just like spitting in a girl's mouth. I'm not I, like I'll, I'll throw up. I can't do stuff like that. Maybe a little, th you know. I kissed somebody not too long ago and. Um, they had extra saliva in their mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't play that. It's too much. It's disgusting. Yeah, it should be a little wet. A even little if wet. You, even if we like, you know what I'm saying? And then you go, yeah. like, it got to be like. Tph. Yeah. But it can't be like. <laughs> like it can't or be just all... even like the extra watery, like, it's too much. And then you ate candy at 3 in the afternoon and now it's midnight and you didn't brush He's your teeth. He's too freaky. I'm big on hygiene in general. If you kiss me and you haven't brushed your teeth, it's going in a memoir at some oh, point. Oh, yeah, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. You know, the, you know I, I said this. I said Rihanna's like the only woman I think could get me. It's something about her. You've met Rihanna. Yeah. Isn't she hot, though? Gorgeous. Mm. And now Mama Rihanna and, is and, really hot. And sexy, though. Because yeah. you know some people are like, they're handsome or gorgeous, but they're not sexy. You but know she, what I mean? Like you'll see like a hot model and you'll be yeah. like, oh, he's hot, but like, ew, I don't want to fuck him. But she's like you too. Like, she's like the guy, but she's like that bitch. Period. Yeah, love you. All right, I'll just do you in there. Anyway. Yeah, you too know. freaky, bro. <laughs> All right, this next one. Kalani. Too young. Okay. She's just too young. She's like a little sister to me. Me and, me and her, we, we've spoken a lot. Throughout the years, hmm. she's like a little sister. She's pretty from the Bay too. Yeah, gorgeous. gorgeous okay, girl. we already talked about this guy, but um, why kill Cyrus? <laughs> too young. I don't, we just go. Can we just? Why are you get? I'm old enough to be his mother. You Next. are. You are a mother, and you got a bib. Uh, well, how how old is he? I don't know. He's like 19. 20. No, he's not. He's I'm like 20 years older than him. It is. It's right at the cusp. So seven years. My yeah, no. 27, okay. All right, um, this next one, I threw this one in just because I want to know. You know, this genre of music is back on the thing. <laughs> you are a messy queen. You are a messy motherfucking queen. Texas, hold on. <laughs> anyway, we love you, Dolly. I just, love you, Dolly, girl. Have, yeah. 
<laughs> you, when you were walking in the ball, you were giving Dolly Parton teased a little bit. Who? You, when you were walking with the big puppy. With the afro? Yes. Mm. You better go back and look but at it. But see, they didn't show the part where I took it off and I flew it in the crowd. No. Like, I, I went like that and I yeah. threw it in the crowd. And they they went crazy for me, Jason. No, you got to go watch Working 9 to 5 with Dolly. I'm telling mm. you, it was given that. Okay. Okay. All right, next person. I asked you earlier if you saw the thing swinging around on the plane. It just, I'm just saying. You are so fucking messy. Oh, why? You guys didn't date. No, no, okay. no, no, no. Um, it's just you can go to Yamashita. Drake. Like this, you, you, this is this is the clickbait that they're gonna pick. You can go to Yama. Let me set the tone. He calls you up. He's gonna feed you oh sushi at Yamashiro. You're gonna then walk down all those steps to Yamashisha that he owns and smoke all that hookah. You will have that pink lipstick on. You will have a nice little. I'm gonna do it for the culture. Thank you. All right. Can we shake? Yeah, can we clap it culture. up for the culture, please? <laughs> <laughs> Because Drake is a rapper, but he's Drake. It's not like still Drake, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, y'all would, ooh, y'all would burn it in. Ooh, Kanye would lose his mind. All right, Jason. You know Kanye would lose his mind. You know this. <laughs> Why? Why would he even care? Because those two are. You know, there's that. We know. Why would he care who I date? This is, First oops. of all, he and he, oh, that that competition thing, and then he and you, he and she walking down the. The steps at an arena for oh my god, That's such a mess. Let's Scorch my earth, Drake. Holla at me. Call me. Come on. All right. <laughs> okay, this one right here. You know, I could see it. Megan, I just don't like vagina, man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> right. You do. <laughs> All right. This one's hot. Met him in France. Cool guy. I heard you like him, Trevor. Noah, right? Yes. Take you over to South Africa. Hit my DMs, Trevor. You're fucking beautiful. Hit your DMs? Yeah. So Trevor Noah, for real, because people watch the show, I'm mm. probably going to send this clip to him. He slides in your DM. Uh, wait, is, is he, I think he's in a relationship. I don't know, and I don't think he would care. I know. I think, uh, well, I think he, it, it, it's just a single, game, Okay. but definitely smash, for sure. <laughs> He's a really nice guy. Too. He's biracial, like us. Yes, yes. Hey. Y'all can have that biracial daughter. All right, all right. Calm <laughs> okay. down. Tell you jokes when you're sad. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> okay, this one I don't even understand why you follow him because of the perm. But let's go ahead and put him up. Tucker, Carl- Tucker Carlson. No way. Yeah. You would not smash Tucker I like, Carlson. I'm a sapiosexual. I think he's very smart. He's a journalist. I think he's extremely smart. I'm fucking smashing Period. Emma Rose, he is the devil. And I know. The devil? For why? This one? Yeah. Why is he the devil? He's, a, is, he's, he's just a bad person. No, he's not. Have you not? You watched the show. You're a fan. Well, uh, I follow him on Instagram. Did you see that I follow him on Instagram? Yes, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, I'm a fan. But do you watch the show? I watch everything Tucker Carlson. And if Tucker Carlson slides, Tucker Carlson. I'm pretty sure he's married, but if he slides, I'm smashing. What do you mean? All right, and last one. She's a hottie, but she's a girl. I spy. She's cute though, but the vagina thing is. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's it's just the vagina. Yeah. Like her and Meg. Like if I was into girls, I would I would fuck them both. The only reason I did Margot is because I low key been crushing on her for like ten something years now. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's only the the wet vagina thing is a lot. I understand. It's a lot for me. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So what else is what's next? So the book is gonna come when we get a book. Can you can we get the granular detail, blow by blow, no pun intended? Um, I'm just I don't know why I'm scared of that, Jason. I don't know why I'm scared of that because let me, let me just say this: if I fully tell my truth about everything, mm-hmm. you know. A lot of people will have to deal with a lot of a, a lot of things if I really come out and really say everything that has happened to me throughout the years. Um, and so I don't know if I'm ready for that smoke. I I don't have it. Maybe if I had a husband um, or like someone that I knew that had my back, like Cassie has her husband. Um, but right now, I just I feel like I'm out here in LA by myself, too vulnerable to really tell my story. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Maybe one day I'll have more of a support system to tell my story. Mm. And then scorched earth. 
But truth is truth. I mean, right? It's truth. Yeah. yeah. It, it wouldn't be for any other reason besides telling my story. It would it would be 100% the truth. You know, I always tell people when they be like, oh, he be spilling the tea. I be spilling the tea. Truth starts with the tea. Yeah. It ain't contrived or made up. It's just the truth. And we do live in a world where the truth is scary. The truth is not popular. The truth is what it is. We just mm-hmm. lay it down, not on the altar. Yeah. For some. But when you just lay it down, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So let me give you your flowers real quick, okay? Uh, okay. I'm going to give you your flowers. Joseph, you told them my favorite Listen. sunflowers. Thank yeah. you. Okay, and we love you. And I'm going to pop up on I the love YouTube you too, show. Honey. Not going to Arby's, though. No, no, no. That okay. was just something from, fun for me and China to do. We could do whatever you want. Something a little bit more bougie. I know, we know you're bougie, okay. Jason. We could do something bougie. All right. We could well, do like Boa or whatever. No, I was at Boa last night. We'll go to Yamashisha to see if Drake is there. Oh, or what is it? A Matsuisu? <laughs> What's that? That's the one in, we'll go. Some so rich, like Wilshire. Some rich shit. It's very rich. All right. It's well, listen, rich. love you. I'm glad that I you, love you honey. made Thank it you. and you came on the show. Give it up for Amber Rose. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching The Jason Lee Show. To watch more episodes like that, click right here. And if you want to see more, subscribe below and click that notification bell. <laughs>